home of the nine-hour L.A. Sports Mega Block. Ladies and gentlemen, this is your captain speaking. We call it the LAX, LA Sports Mega Block. Of course, powered every day by LAX, Los Angeles International Airport, where change arrives daily. Let's get to it. Time to get in the air. We're taking off, LA. We have clearance, Clarence. Roger, Roger. What's our vector, Victor? Travis and Sliwa has clearance right now. Come on, look at DeMarco. Look at DeMarco ready to go. Buenos dias. I, 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 hey, I think buenos you mentioned dias. that yesterday. We didn't do yeah, that yesterday, no, did we? Buenos dias. That's why I said, hey, come on, Chris. You didn't even get a chance to say buenos dias. Nothing. Can we do Aloha? Or oh, do we yeah, she's done with Aloha. Mm. What was yeah, that? she's done. What did you just it's do? It's my roar. I go, I go, roar. You scared me. Yeah, wow. she no, she's a roar. She roars, she roars when the show like when it. the show starts. Yeah, exactly. What's up, DeMarco? Nada. How can you not thrash around when that song comes on? Yeah. That song is about thrashing, breaking stuff. Yeah. That's why I start head headbanging. Come That's on. That's fair. That's fair. Yeah. Were you a big, uh, were you into Rage Against the Machine? What do you mean, like, was, was I? What do you mean, was? Still, still are. Uh, yeah, bro. Come on now. Come catch me walking in the park in, in, in at like five in the morning. I got it blasting in my pocket. I don't use the, <laughs> the ear headphones. Oh, you just I have bl- it on? On speaker. <laughs> That's yes. a crazy move. Okay, do we have... That's a crazy move. Middle of the night. Can you think, imagine that? You can't see anything? All, I think we all have opinions on... Because I <laughs> yeah. I didn't know you're that person, but I definitely... I, okay, there was a... I was going out for a walk, and the girl was across the street from me. Yeah. Older lady, and she had her phone as loud as can possibly be. I was listening to the podcast with her. Basically, like, as we were walking, Yeah. I'm like, oh, okay, so um, chapter two is starting. Well, that means speed up. You never put headphones on? <laughs> never. Ever, ever, ever. Now, Why? I never, like, use an outside speaker. Like, I don't No, you're not bringing a JBL or a, no. a Bose Whatever or something. Whatever the iPhone, the, the Max, that's what I'm using. But I am rocking pill. the whole way. Can you imagine that? Middle of the night, hey. all of a sudden you start hearing, like, some heavy metal behind you. And some footsteps. I don't know about this. <laughs> and then there's DeMarco, <laughs> right. former NFL player behind you. Head down, um, not even looking up. Let's just go. Why, why aren't you throwing a headphone yeah. on? I don't want to ruin my hearing. Okay, but you're also going to ruin the mornings of everyone. It's 5 in the morning. Who cares? There's nobody out there. Well, no, but that's coyotes. why. It's not yeah. noon. There's there's nobody out there but coyotes and like four other people. And they, all, they thank me for having the music so loud because they know I'm coming. Yeah. See? That's it right there. Five in the morning, baby. Uh, lap three. Let's go. Come on. Pick it up. <laughs> You're going to end up getting one of those speakers. You're nah, going to have basically see, like wrong. a live show going on at 5 a.m. in the morning. With a speaker, that's speaker wrong. On your phone. That's, that's, disturbing the, that's disturbing the peace with a speaker. But with a phone, it's legal. So you play, So your playlist, how eclectic is your playlist in the morning? Uh, let me see. I got the... Like, do you go from Rage Against the Machine to... Okay, I had to stop listening to the 80s station. Okay. Because I keep remembering when, like I was eleven, I was twelve, I was thirteen, and you, oh, get, wow. you get depressed, really, because yeah, you start. Music, remi- by the way, music it, does. Th- th- it does definitely that. Right back to where you were at twelve and thirteen, and then Travis you- is the same thing with the fifties music. It just always uh, gets to his heartbeat. <laughs> Travis rocks with the. F- oh, that was a joke. See, I didn't know you guys set me up to get beat up by Travis. Okay, by the way, she's, yes. uh, yeah. she's brutal when it comes to that. Why are you so mean to Travis? Because I uh, first off, I think he likes it. Yeah. Okay, I think he feeds into it. Okay, you're all headed in the same direction. At some point, you're uh, going to be his age. I'm sure, maybe. <laughs> yeah, this is Travis's 10-year-old music when he's walking around. Uh, but yeah, okay, so That's not after bad. the show yesterday. <laughs> I can listen to that. It's very pleasant. <laughs> after the show yesterday, Alan, you spilled the beans. We were going to trick DeMarco. Come on. Oh, Thank yeah, you, yeah, Alan. yeah. No, that, wasn't like after, anymore, that was after the show on Monday. Yeah. Was it two days ago? Yeah. I think it was two days ago. It was okay. Monday when you had me like almost scaring Travis. He loves it. Yeah, come on, Alan. Yeah. Thank well, you, Al, for telling me I don't trust you anymore, can Emily. I, can I just give my defense for a quick second? Go ahead. I thought you knew we were screwing around. No idea. We were saying, so it was April Fool's, and we were talking about how we're like, yeah, Trav loves he pranks. Loves pranks. Loves I had no pranks. idea. None. He would love for you to be in the back of his Silverado and not jump out <laughs> until halfway home. Yeah. Like, we're just completely joking I around. I thought you were serious. I but, thought you were serious. And this guy was like, oh, this is great. Yes. That's awesome. I, I didn't know Trav had that no angle. No idea. I thought you were serious. <laughs> I told you, if you back up a little bit, I said I'm always the mark. And you just saw why. See, I thought you hey, were serious. Sp- speaking of pranks, did you guys see that video I sent you guys yesterday? Bro, this that's girl, hilarious. This girl posted a note on her mom's 
honk and flip me off as you're driving by me. As an April that Fool's. Is hysterical. As an April, did you watch it? You I end up watching it? hysterical. Bro. Yeah, oh my God. The mom's, the like, mom's losing it. <laughs> Why are they doing this to me? <laughs> the mom is losing it. Yeah, that's pretty good. That's you know, pretty we good. used to get in trouble for that when I was like 12, 13. It was a thing. If mm. you're driving with your parents or somebody else's parents, you yeah. would write like a sign that says help and put it in the <laughs> oh, back window. Okay, yeah. Right. That's, See, that's, that's the stuff good. we used to do back then. Oh, <laughs> right. No. Crazy. Right, help? This is like mid 80s. This is when it was cool right. and okay well, to do. For, first well, also, off, when people were like snatching kids, that was like the whole stranger danger thing. See, stupid. No, right? here's what else was going on yeah. in the 80s. In the 80s, it was basically. I don't know how many different times that I would. I remember, you know, I drive with my mom or something like that. I would turn around, no seatbelt on, and I would just have my hands on, you know, you're like looking on the back. Oh, the, yeah. Looking out the back window. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Nobody was saying, hey, uh, you want to put a seatbelt on? Like, there was nothing. There was no discussion. That yeah. was the mid-80s. I know. I miss those days. And you're still here. <laughs> still here. <laughs> right. We, we ate still bacon every day. We still, I was listening still to a podcast this morning, and Jeff Passan got into his senior prank. That he did in high school, and uh, baseball he, Jeff passing it was yeah, good. Baseball yeah. insider Jeff passing yeah. okay. on his senior prank, and it, apparently this is on YouTube. Okay. You can go on YouTube and see little Jeff passing. And is he, he playing a prank or somebody's doing he a prank had on a him? Prank. Basically, the prank was he <laughs> got everyone in his school to give him some money because he was going to hire a um, woman of entertainment to. Get at his teacher. Can't say stripper. Yeah, no? he say stripper. Okay, sure. stripper. How okay. old is he? He was eighteen. Okay. So he hired a stripper. Okay, a young man. I, I was thinking like his... this. The way she started it, I was like, he's what is he? Twelve? Yeah. No, yeah. This guy's we'll hiring. We so come out of the risky okay. business era, so this is nothing so far. <laughs> so go ahead. Stripper go yeah. like he gets a stripper to come to his science teacher, and basically was going to teach him quote unquote anatomy. Oh. And then the principal found out, and then escorted the stripper out of the school, and. He was so scared that he wasn't going to be able to graduate, et cetera. But he had to – there was no Venmo, obviously, at the time. So he had to go around and get Give money him. from his uh, classmates to pay the stripper. And he, the day before, had you know, just stacked up the money on his kitchen counter before he went to school. And his mom saw the money in the kitchen counter. He told her what he was doing. And the mom was like, okay. Whoa, okay. <laughs> really? So wow. it's, a, it's a pretty good story that he tells. Um, and it, Who would have thought great. Jeff Passon from the yeah. senior prank – Stripper in class yeah. to breaking every major league baseball story. Yeah, doing his elbow impressions. Might be a hard no if you see cash. Your kid has cash, and what are you going to do it with the tells cash? You. The mom We're going to buy a, a stripper. Uh, that might be a no. Yeah, yeah, no. It's a interesting yeah. One. But shout out to the mom for uh, you know being allowing him to do that. I guess so. Do a great story. God so bless. to yeah. clarify here, Travis not exactly a prankster. Which no. not ex- not the biggest surprise, I think. Uh, Trav's still out. He's back tomorrow. Not exactly the biggest prank. But you said something to Emily and I. You're like, oh well, now I have to prank. But him. I'm glad you got. I'm glad you told me because had I scared him and you know he scares me back, that's two big dudes going at it pregame. <laughs> I don't even think Trav so would do anything. Trav dudes. would not have revenge. He would just be incredibly disappointed in his friend. If I. Yes. If I scared him. Yes. Okay. Yeah. I don't think he would ever say, I'm going to get him back. I think he would get home and tell Susan, I thought I could trust this man, and I could no longer See, trust him. See, that's how I feel mm-hmm. about Emily right now. Hey. See? I mm. thought I could trust you. She was setting me up. <laughs> and it was Emily was very content. sly about See? it, too. It was great content. Look, all in the sake of content. <laughs> she was very natural. Wow. <laughs> so I, she mentioned I, something about senior pranks. Do you guys do anything for senior pranks? Because I, I remember in my high school. What'd you guys uh, do? I don't a, remember a couple what we guys, did. A couple guys went around certain classrooms and put crazy glue in the lock. Ooh. And there was like maybe 10 classrooms. Does that, that work? We couldn't, it, I guess like in did. the door lock? Yeah. So they oh. couldn't get out? So, no, teachers, they, it was early in the morning. They came in early in the morning yep. put the crazy glue on there so teachers couldn't get in. So then school was kind of <laughs> canceled that's pretty good. for yeah. half of the yeah. day. That's pretty good. Uh, teachers don't get paid <laughs> not to bad. deal with that crap. Come so on, guys. Don't do it. it was, that's it was, not bad. I'm not saying go out there and do it, kids. I'm just saying this is something. Well, that's but first if you off, have any senior pranks and you have a really exactly. good story, call us in 877-710-3776 or tweet at us because we love these stories. MTV used to have best senior prank things. They'd have these episodes. Episodes. So one of the ones that I always remember, and I think many schools have done this at this point, if you like live near farms, but uh, they have they have three pigs. <laughs> right. They have three pigs, and they let them loose in the school. Yeah. They write oh. on the side of them one, two, and four, so that everyone's always looking for the for third number pig. three. Oh, <laughs> that's beautiful. That's pretty good. That is beautiful. Yeah, but send them in if you have any. 
Um, wow. So I asked you right before the show started. All I said to you was just, hey, got something you know, kind of random that you want to talk about. Yeah. And what was your response to me? Let's just entertain the people. No, before that. What did I say? You said you hate Jake Paul. I do hate Jake Paul. Where'd that come from? I was talking to Jorge about boxing, and uh, everybody's making fun of Mike Tyson. This whole thing. He's 59. He's got a 58, 59? 58. I think, yeah, some of that. Whatever it is. High 50s. High 50s, and he's got a fight coming up, and people are making fun of And Mike Tyson is- Wait, who's making fun of Mike Tyson? People are saying it's like Jake Paul is cherry picking and all this type of stuff, and they're, they're giving Mike heat for taking the fight. I, I get the – that one doesn't surprise me that they're giving him heat yeah. just because it's Mike Tyson. They're like, why are you – why are you walking into – why are you giving this guy extra pub, this or whatever? It's Jake Mike Tyson. Paul. Yeah. I think we're all on the same page. We all hate Jake Paul. You know, yeah. I, I, I hope Mike wipes the floor. When is that him. fight? Uh, uh, I, I'm not – are you going to buy it? Uh, no. See, that's what I'm saying. No. I think we should support Mike. Okay, we I'm, love I, Mike, I'm right? not – I'm no? not going to – I'm not going to buy it either. Yeah. I don't usually buy any of those fights. I did find a way to watch the Mayweather McGregor when that happened. Oh, that was fun. Yeah. That's kind of is that that much different? Well, Mike is like you said almost 60. He's Look, almost last, at retirement age. But that was watched. like that was that was a <laughs> And he's fighting the YouTube boxer. <laughs> no, I I know I know that. Yeah. But but I'm saying that the Mayweather McGregor no. was purely show. No, I there mean, was that, no, there was nothing to that. That put them. That that's a whole different thing. This is a sideshow. Mm-hmm. That yeah. just happens to be Mike Tyson. I saw the Roy Jones Jr. against Mike Tyson fight. That was I, the last one I saw. Weren't then, you impressed with Tyson? I, I, I was, didn't see it. Yeah, I was. Then they interview post fight. They interview Roy Jones. They're like, "Hey, how do you feel about going against Mike?" And then Mike standing there. He's like, "Why don't you guys ask me like right. how I feel? <laughs> like what about me? My feelings? Mid fifties, <laughs> exactly. Look pretty good. Yeah. So he everybody does. was giving him." Heat. His so, training, all right, he so you fast. hate you hate yeah. Jake Paul. Oh no, he does. The problem he's, is, oh. you get to like two rounds. What's his, uh, you know, what's his? Um, is he still breathing at that point? Mike? In the sense of, yeah, you're just you're 59 years old. The training as videos you're he puts. Out, oh no, he's. Well, I wouldn't want to catch Tyson. any of that. I'm smoke. with you on that. Yeah, yeah. at all. Now. No, 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 no. no. So I hope that. that you know ends this whole Jake Paul nonsense. But. As boxing fans, I think we should support Mike because that's what he's saying. What's wrong with me getting a payday? You know, oh, I'm Would okay you with Mike me Tyson. Not get the no, I'm okay with Mike Tyson getting a payday. Yeah, so I think I'll buy the fight. I hope he gets enough money to take the L, though. We were just talked about take the L. Well, he's come on, man. Who you want, want Mike to lose? No, Mike I don't want Mike to lose. Jake I, don't, I, don't I don't want Mike to lose either. But yeah. you know, it's written in there somehow. Come on, that's it. I'm bu- if if Mike loses to Jake Paul, exactly. I'm buying the cabin in the that's woods. It's saying. over. I'm off the grid. Yeah, Whatever it's written, Mike yeah. could say absolutely, absolutely. And then once he gets in the fight, he's like, look, nobody's <laughs> stopping this thing. <laughs> right. Take that dude out. Take that dude out. All right, Lakers. Uh, we got a short show today. This is very similar to yesterday, just because we got these early starts. So Mason Island will come up after us, but they'll come in around twelve. Uh, Lakers four and one so far on the road trip. They Unreal. beat Toronto yesterday. Yeah, they got one more game left against the Washington Wizards. They got a chance to come back home five and one. And what has that done in the standings? Nothing. Literally, they haven't but moved five in the and standings. One on the road trip, but they're playing good yeah. basketball. So let's talk a little bit about what the Lakers are doing right now. Stay right here. Appreciate you guys being the part of the show. Demarco Far in for Travis Rogers, seven ten ESPN. Hey, I'm Dave Denholm, and I'm Mario Rees. You know us from the LAFC radio broadcasts. <laughs> Now we have a new podcast called LAFC Plus, and you can find it on the ESPN LA app. LAFC Plus brings you all the latest on the black and gold. Plus, we break down the latest news and interesting stories from around MLS. For all the news, fun, insight, and everything that is MLS and LAFC, join us on LAFC Plus. LAFC! It's available on the ESPN LA app and everywhere you get your podcasts. Join us. Hi Parker. What's up, Greg? Hi Parker. So- <laughs> Jeez. Little uh, Otani and Dodger blue. Yeah, why are you looking at the camera? <laughs> I don't know. Let's start over. All right, Parker. Dodger spring training. That's right, Greg. 
Otani and Dodger Blue. Yeah, Yamamoto's here. Pretty excited about that one. Tons of new faces. I mean, Kike's back. Yes, it's great. Maybe we should talk about it on the ESPN LA YouTube channel. I like that idea. What do you say, 9.30, 9.55? Right, leading right into Travis and Sliwa. Get a couple guests. Maybe uh, Marcus Grant, Travis Rogers, perhaps. Yep, just have a bunch of people come in. Maybe Clinton Yates will even find his way in. Oh, you know, you always want to have the handsome man uh, president right there. Absolutely. All right, well, I think we should do that. We'll do it every day, Monday through Friday, 9.30 to 9.55 on the ESPN LA YouTube channel. Thanks to LAX. Big news, Laker fans. John Ireland here. You can now stream every Lakers game on the ESPN LA app. Don't miss a second of the action with Michael Thompson and I on the call. Plus, all your live and local Lakers talk every day in the palm of your hand. You're one tap away from everything Lakers. You can even win Lakers tickets. Download the ESPN LA app. And bam. Bam. Download the ESPN LA app at the App Store and Google Play. Love what? This one. what is that? I do. <laughs> See, I told you I was gonna throw him off. I told you. What is this? It's Taylor Swift. It's Taylor Swift, bro. A remix? Yeah. The is that what you call it? Yeah, what oh, it okay. Yeah, you definitely. I'm like, what just I walk, happened? I, I walk around with this at six in the morning. <laughs> Out of my phone. Headphones or no? Yeah, no, no headphones. No, no headphones, headphones too. JBL speaker to the, the side of my pants. That's got a good beat too. I didn't yeah. know. I, I'm finding out here about. I, I didn't know that. I didn't know this was a popular thing to do, no headphones, and having your having your phone out. It's popular? Well, two of the four of oh, us are okay. already in it. I, yeah, I thought it was just me. Yeah. No, I do my soccer workouts, and I have the speaker like in my soccer bag as I'm working out. As you're working out, at the yeah. Park. Nobody's at the park. I'm like, I'm yeah, but he's somewhere. at a park. You're you want to like keep walking. your ears free so you can hear stuff. You're walking yeah. through driveways where somebody has the window cracked open for some fresh air, I'm, I'm, and they're listening to... No, no, I'm in the park. I'm in the park. They can't hear me. They can't hear me. They can't. Except for the coyotes. I am not disturbing anyone out there. Yes, and I want the coyotes to hear me. Did you ever coming. hear? Okay, we'll just stay with the Rage Against the Machine for a quick second. By the way, we gotta we'll grab this call in a quick second. The, the senior prank. Senior prank. Somebody's got a good one. Do you ever stole hear, my cousin's girlfriend? Does that count? 
as a prank? No. Bro, that's not a prank. Wait, what? That's just... <laughs> I was trying to... I was racking my head about, like, my senior prank. I'm like, nah, that's I stole my me. cousin's <laughs> girlfriend, got, though. Yeah. Does we that got count to, as a we prank? We got to the break. <laughs> <laughs> we got to the break, and he goes, hey, I stole my girl... I stole uh, my cousin's um, girlfriend in my senior... Is that a prank? I'm gotcha. like, Yeah, I'm like, that's not a prank. That's just a... Why, why did you steal take... Her? She crossed the street, you know? Oh, yeah, she can't steal, <laughs> can't steal a woman. She has agency. <laughs> right, but, yeah. right. She crossed the street, you know? That's not a what prank. A funny That's prank. not a prank. Because you know what you didn't okay. do after? is like, what? hey, I got you, I brother. Got, well, I kind of. <laughs> I got you. <laughs> well, kind of, sort of. Bazinga. <laughs> <laughs> got you. Sorry. Anyway. Right, let, let's take let's a quick call here, and then I'll tell you my, my Rage Against Machine story. Glenn and Glendora, uh, or Gil in Glendora. Gil, what's going on, brother? Thank you for calling in. Hey, thank you. I, uh, so back in 94, 95, senior year, uh, we had a buddy who had a, uh, his dad worked at a auto shop, a junkyard, and uh, the night before the, the class started that day, we um, put about three or four frames of Volkswagens on the rooftop of our school wow. at West Covina High School. Oh, the Bulldogs. How do you oh, even do man. That? You put Bulldogs, three cars baby. on the roof? Coach Majori. Uh, oh, dude. Yeah, I... this is the frames, though. Not like the whole car, but it took about seven, eight guys just to throw them up there. And it was just bewildering the way the custodial guys were like, how are we going to get these cars down? Love it. And well, they were Gil, just Gil, how Gil, did they get them down? Gil, that's, that's, a, that's a prank. That's a prank. What he did was a prank. That's a prank. What DeMarco did was not a prank. It depends on who you ask. No, no, it no. depends hey. on who you talk to. Hey, yeah. De- DeMarco, thank you, sir, for that championship for the Super Bowl. Me and my family love you very much. Oh, thank you, man. But, uh, yes, sir. That's just, that's just a player being a player. Yeah. Yeah. See? <laughs> See? Thank you. He gets it. Donate the like player. Said, hate the game. Did you on, text Gil. this dude to call you? No. That's yeah, I think you though. texted yes, him. Yes, sir. Thank uh, you, Gil. Appreciate you calling in. All right, you guys. Have a good one. Thank you, man. I've always wanted to do that. Put car like car on the roof. How I love that. How do you that. get it down? Yeah, but that's the real question. I'm still how confused how they a got it up there. He said seven, eight guys helped. Yeah, but it was a, it was just a frame. Of just a the bug. frames. Like a wow. Like mm-hmm. a bug. I mean, those aren't that heavy. Love that. I mean, imagine right. the guys. But you still have to team. get it on the roof, even if it's not that heavy. You still have to get it. You got to move roof. it up there. Yeah, and uh, assemble it up you there. Get I guess. The school. A lot of work. Like I have so many more questions. A lot of work. They're still talking about that at that high school. They're like, what the hell happened here in '94? This dude, Gil. I'm sure there was a law broken somewhere. Um, all right, so I'm, I'm t- I tell this quiz. You were talking about Rage Against the Machine. Yeah. So I, I randomly, maybe this is another rabbit hole one, but I'm watching this. BBC had this. They were going to allow, uh, this was years ago. I, I don't know how many years ago. They were going to allow Rage Against the Machine. You know how sometimes BBC and there's... Uh, NPR you could use some of these more independent I know they're still huge but they'll allow them to here's a set from this band we're going to let them play four or five minutes whatever kind of like yeah. acoustic or like a, exactly. a smaller thing exactly yeah, so like tiny desk so they're exactly so they were going to do it live so Rage Against the Machine they said look um, but there's no cursing so just know if you guys are going to do this <laughs> there's no cursing we can't have curse this is live this is live television on BBC we cannot have any You're going to tell Rage Against the Machine? They're telling Rage Against the Machine this. Cuss. So what does Rage do? You deserve everything you get. Here's yep. what Rage does. They're yep. like, of course, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, no, it's live. We're not going to. If you're telling us not to curse, we're not going to Do you curse. know who we are? Okay. <laughs> right. So which song was it? It was Killing in the Name uh-huh. of. Uh-huh. Part they of do it, it is. And they do it. They told you. Blank right? you. Okay. I won't do what you tell me. Okay, so <laughs> as they're getting closer to that, like, that yeah. portion of the song. So they're getting through the first three minutes or so, and the- uh, F you, I won't do what you tell me. And that's towards the end anyways. Yeah. So they're going, it's live, they're doing their thing, there's no cursing, there's none of that stuff. And they had like perfectly planned this, like this is the greatest thing ever. BBC's asking us to come on. They're telling us we need you not to curse. They're saying absolutely no problem. Come on. Do you know who you're talking to? We'll do the sign of the cross. We promise we're not going to curse. Do you know the name of the band? (laughs) (laughs) So they they get right to the end. And it's live TV. Yeah. And they do exactly what they would do in any other situation, any other predicament. I got to find the clip. I'll send it to you. Oh, I've but, seen it. So, yeah. so, so they're doing Zach it. De La Roca, right? That's yeah. his name. So yeah. they, they start. The BBC starts panicking. They're like, you know, 
they're cursing on live TV. And she's like, oh, somebody take this off. Somebody take this off. You hear her in the background talking <laughs> while they're doing their thing. But yeah, that just like, made. Listen to the lyrics. They won't do what you tell them. Lit- <laughs> right. you, walked, you walked right into it. But when you said you're listening to Rage at 5 a.m. in the that morning song. doing your thing. Absolutely. Okay. I have one more story. Then we can get to the Lakers yeah. and everything. So this has to do with another thing where you're on cable and you're trying to censor things. So uh, we all love. Um, uh, I'm sorry, I'm blanking the, the Coen Brothers movie in L.A., uh, Big Lebowski. So Big Lebowski, yeah, yeah, we all yeah. love that movie. Yep. And uh, there's a line in which John Goodman's character says, um, to F a stranger in the A. Oh, right? my God. So it's yes. on TNT. This is what happens when you blank a blank and a blank. <laughs> right, exactly. <laughs> so uh, the TNT, or like the, the, the cable version Goodman's is- Goodman's so good in that movie. Is F a stranger in the Alps- in the Alps, like the like the mountain range in France and this in France and uh, that creativity so, softens it up some. Yep. Forward thinking. Uh, one of your uh, singers, Phoebe Bridgers, her debut album was called "Stranger in the Alps." Oh, oh, that's because good. Because of that, and she sings oh. like very mellow, that's very good. sad folk music. That's good. And then she says she named it that because of watching The Big Lebowski on cable. So wow. that's another censoring thing that's That's a funny. whole other movie on, like, network TV. Well, oh, come on. I mean, think about any time they play Casino or they yeah. play Goodfellas and they're playing it on TBS or TNT, it's like, why? Well, I mean, just don't even How do you have Joe Pesci on network yeah, TV? You just can't, you can't, you can't even try. Everything's a beep. Yeah. <laughs> everything is. Everything is like his mouth is moving. Nothing, Nothing. of what is moving, his mouth is coming <laughs> out. It's like Wolf of Wall Street has the most F words in ev- any movie ever, and, like, I think they probably have do that on TNT. No, but we'll yeah. never put, that, not on. put wow. that on there. Crazy. Um, all right, so Lake Show got a game. They're about to finish up their road trip. Six-game road trip. Yep. Um, I got three scary words for you. Darvin Ham extension. Ooh. See, look at you. Terrified. No, no you can't do that. You can't do that. <laughs> Let the season play out. And I, it's, by the way, it's an yeah. interesting guy. Em- Emily brought this up a little bit earlier. She said, what would have to happen for Darvin Ham to be around next year? Next year would be his final year of his three-year contract that he signed with the Lakers. Yeah. What would have to happen next year? Or what would have to happen this year this in the year, playoffs? Right now. A 5-1 road trip, will, that helps. It helps, but I, I think the Lakers are obviously going to get judged in these next 30 days of what happens. Yeah. Next 30 days, you're going to find out, A, if the Lakers got out of the playing tournament, B, who their matchup is in the first round, and they're able to you know, to, to make a similar type of run that they had last year or not. Um, I think it's an interesting question because two months ago, if you'd have told me what's the future of Darvin Ham, I think it was pretty easy to just be like, guys, look, look, look where they're at. They're hovering around 500. Um, they'd, it's not even just what their record is. They don't like they're going to make any noise. Right. Well, if you're not going to make any noise, coming off the Western Conference Finals, Braun, we're, we're not sure how much longer he's going to play, but I know that Braun has played 64, 65 games this year. Anthony Davis has already played close to 70 games this year. That we're, You're getting close to the mark where these guys, when the dust settles, they're available. So really, what is your excuse to not go on a run unless your just team's not good enough or your coach is not good enough or a combination of the two? But let let me just kind of lay out where they're sitting right now. If the playoffs started today, this is the path that the Lakers would have to go on in order to make some noise, okay? And it's not an easy one. So as as well as they've been playing, the potential to go 5-1 and one on this road trip, um, they're playing good basketball. They're 10-11 games over 500 since February 1st. This is the path that they'd have to go on if the playoffs started today. Playoffs started today. You got to play the Golden State Warriors in a one-game playoff here at Crypto. Um, I think they match up really well against the Warriors. I think the Lakers are an absolute headache for the Warriors. They got too much size. They got too much uh, length and everything else. It's it's not a good matchup for the Warriors. However, you just got to win one game. The Golden State Warriors can win one game against the Lakers. Sure they can. All right, yeah. put that to the side. They got to go through the Warriors. Let's say Toss they get up. through the 50, Warriors. Fifty-fifty. Yeah. Okay. I would say. I'd, I'd actually go probably 70-30. I, I would mean, give the Lakers that no much of an advantage. No disrespect to either team. That could go either way. It could yeah, go either way either in way. the sense that all the Warriors need to do is have one good game. Clay's hitting his three. Steph's hitting his three. Right. Draymond's having a good game. Wiggins or is... Or LeBron is throwing him in like he was. Or if the Lakers yeah. are not playing well. Yeah. So it could be a combination yeah. of that. you got to get through the Warriors. Then you play the loser of the Sacramento Kings and the Phoenix Suns. That's got to be on the road. Not a good matchup either way. Sacramento, we'll see what happens. They got a couple injuries right now. Phoenix, look, you still got Devin Booker, Kevin Durant. They could yeah. go off in any game. So now you got to win two games in a row. 
And you know who's number one right now in the Western Conference? Who? It's the Denver Nuggets. Yeah. So if the playoffs started today, you got to win. You got to beat Steph Curry. You got to beat KD and Devin Booker or De'Aaron Fox and DeMontis Sabonis, who you've had trouble with, obviously. And then you get Jamal Murray and Nikola Jokic. That's the path the Lakers like would have. The final boss. So yeah. it, it almost it, – I'm not saying that it doesn't count what the Lakers have done, but even as good as they played – and you could feel much better about them today than you felt a month and a half, two months ago. Yeah. But even with that path, look what they have in front of them. See what I mean? You – Went right to where I thought she would go. Now imagine if they do that. And there's a possibility the Lakers could do that. How do you fire that guy if you do that? Well, I, I think How do you there's... not extend Darvin Ham if you do that? Okay, let, let's do this coming coming okay. back. Because I think the you're the first person I have heard this year put the words Darvin Ham and extension together. <laughs> right. You're the first person. Yeah. But I'll, I'll let you make your case on it. I think that will be interesting. Plus, um, are we doing the score, Em? Yeah, yeah. Come so back. it's it's a national film score day, and so I'm gonna play a film score coming in, and they're gonna be ones that you should know. They're big movies. Yep. So I'm gonna see who can get it first. Okay, we'll do that uh, coming up next as well. Stay right here, Travis and Sleeper Show, 710 ESPN. Hey, I'm Dave Denholm, and I'm Mario Rees. You know us from the LAFC radio broadcast. Ah! Now we have a new podcast called LAFC Plus, and you can find it on the ESPN LA app. LAFC Plus brings you all the latest on the black and gold. Plus, we break down the latest news and interesting stories from around MLS. For all the news, fun, insight, and everything that is MLS and LAFC, join us on LAFC Plus. LAFC! It's available on the ESPN LA app and everywhere you get your podcasts. Join us. Hey, it's Mace. Life may not always go as the playbook intended, but the L.A. County Department of Mental Health has got your back. If you ever feel anxious, overwhelmed, need immediate help, we're here for you with free emotional support, service referrals, and crisis counseling. Call our 24-7 helpline, 800-854-7771, or visit the Department of Mental Health website at dmh.lacounty.gov. Life is a team sport, and the L.A. County Department of Mental Health is here to support you every step of the way. I'm attorney Darren Kavanoki, founder of 1-800-NO-CUFFS, reminding you to exercise your right to shut the f*** up. It doesn't make you look guilty, it makes you look smart. 1-800-NO-CUFFS, because no one looks good in handcuffs, unless you're into that sort of... From L.A. Live on 710 ESPN. Okay. Oh, my 
my god. The Rock. Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah, close. I mean, it it's sounds close, like a little bit like that. Yeah. Right? I kept saying like Jack Sparrow. It's that's not the movie. Yeah, yeah love he that. He is in uh, Pirates of the Caribbean, but yes, the yeah. iconic Pirates of the Caribbean score. I used to play this on the clarinet. Good. Oh, really? Yes. I, I played clarinet. No. And I, and I also played sax in, in high school. Wow. And uh, yeah, I, I need uh, video. I can send you a, a photo. What I if we just video. bring the instruments in and she could perform I, live? I was gonna say, can you? I. It's in Virginia. Oh, okay. Uh, See? So I can't. If someone has a clarinet, I will play yeah. it. Give me wow. a read and I got you. Wow. Is Johnny and I play bass clarinet too. Is he doing Pirates again? I don't Johnny think Depp? so. I, I don't know what his next project is necessarily. Is but he out of trouble? Pirates. I he... don't know. We'll see. Are so, we free so to like Johnny Depp now? No? Okay. <laughs> Let's go deeper into Johnny Depp and find out the Just truth. Saying. Come on. Um, when's the last time you've been to Disneyland? Uh, I, within a year. Okay. Yeah, within the last year. Fun. Yeah, Pirates of the Caribbean is basically where you're tired and you need some time. You, if it's hot outside, Ugh. it's like basically that's that's the best part of Pirates of the Caribbean. I See, let Dad plan the trip. Okay. Where are we going to Pirates? You'll see. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. We yeah. get on the boat, a, everybody's happy. Yeah, see, there's, we get to relax. There's shade. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, nothing to worry about. Um, <clears throat> okay, so I want to get back to your question or the, the conversation we're having about the Lakers. Before we do so. Can I do it again? Darwin yeah. Ham extension. Before we do look that. at that face, we have asked Demarco. <laughs> asked Demarco, yeah, right? Okay, look. Minutes, yeah. In ten minutes, we got asked Demarco. We had some really, really good ones. Yeah. That were coming up uh, on Monday when we did it. Stealing your girlfriend can be a problem. I was gonna say so. Can th- be. This could be part of the theme here is Demarco and uh, I guess my cousin, his high school and and his cousin. Yeah. Um, any questions you got for Demarco Far? Uh, throw them in there. The more kind of random they are, the better. So make sure to tweet us out, and uh, and we'll read some of those in about ten minutes or so. Okay, so I think that's probably. I don't even think it would be an extension. Uh, maybe it would be an extension if they. This is the thirty. If they third won, year. if yeah. they won two games to get in the play-in, and then took down the defending NBA champions, the Denver Nuggets, in the first round. Yes. What happens after that? You'd be the toast of the NBA. LeBron James would rocket up the charts of the goat charts. He would surpass. Some of the people that we shall not name right now. The people he's in competition with. Well, I think that's only if you win a championship. If he does the impossible at 39 years old. If he wins a championship. Well, I think even if you get in position to be able. And what's position? You get to the finals? Win a champ- yeah, get to okay. the Western Conference finals. Um, yeah. Maybe get into the finals. If you if LeBron puts the Lakers in the finals, I mean, he is goaded. He's already goaded. But, I mean, to do it at this age? Come sure. on. Yeah. You might even make Morales a fan. And that's hard. No, that's impossible. I, but yeah, you, that's, that's... but there'd be no wiggle room for you. How do you explain mm-hmm. this at 39 years of age, which is everybody's argument against LeBron? Listen, if I... he does the impossible and drags this rock up a hill and does it again, come on. I, th- it. I think it's room. I think it's difficult to. I really think it's difficult to think past the next six games because so many scenarios can play out. Maybe they get out of <clears throat> that number nine spot. Maybe they don't. Maybe they end up at number ten. Maybe they get out of the plane. Maybe they don't. Yeah. Maybe they match up against the Denver Nuggets in the first round. Maybe it's Oklahoma City or Minnesota. There's still so many variables that can play out. But your question was about Darvin Ham. I I think Darvin is – look, I I don't think it's crazy to say playing for his job, well, that's just going to depend on how far the Lakers go. If they make no noise – First off, if they don't get out of the playing tournament, I think we kind of have answered our question. Easy decision. I think we've answered our question. Yep. If they get to the playoffs and they lose in the first round, but they lost to Denver, and let's say they lost four games to two. You know, it's the Nuggets. It's a he good team. Hard. You fought hard. Yeah. That's the that's the class of the NBA. Then I think it's a little bit different of a conversation. I think it's all right, well, are we not are we not able to get past what we're getting to because of the coach? Or are we not be able? Are we not able to do this because LeBron's just thirty nine years old, and some of these other Losing role players in are inconsistent? Round, everything is on the table. Everything is on the table. Well, I think losing in the first round, if you lost to OKC or Minnesota, two teams that you think, hey, I think we got a, a shot against them. Yeah. I think the only one where there's some hesitation is if you lost to Denver in the first round. And that could be what the Lakers are going to face here. Depending, in the next. if you get swept by Denver, it doesn't matter. If you get swept, it's not even close. It doesn't matter. If, if like you said, if you put up a fight, that's different, right? They always fight against Denver. They just can't win a game. 
That's know? what I mean. But he, yeah. but it it depends on how this team does. But like I said, if you go through all this and you do the impossible, it is impossible to fire or not re-sign Darvin Ham. So that's what makes me laugh. That's why when I say Darvin Ham extension and you look like you're biting a lemon, yep. I love it. Yeah. Well, I because I, you may have to. Here's what's funny. So we were just talking about this. I was asking you. I was like, hey, "How big of an NBA fan are you?" Yesterday, there's some games on. Right, Clippers are playing the Kings. Yeah. Um, Dallas is pl- or uh, yeah, Dallas a uh, Golden State. Problem with the Lakers, even with the way they're playing, they're not getting much help. Phoenix had a couple of games where Phoenix is hot. Right you face now. you yeah. face the Pelicans. They didn't have Ingram. You face Denver. They didn't have Jamal Murray. So they kind of took advantage hey, of on, of some hey. of those games there. Come on. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Pelican fly, come on, Pelican. <laughs> but they're 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 also in a spot here where it's it feels like the all, Lakers or the Suns, the Lakers. Yeah, yeah. All they got to really keep doing is just just handle the business in front. You you I can't control what the Phoenix Suns do. I can't control what the Pelicans do. No. Can't control what the Kings do. All you what do the Warriors do. What Dallas does. Control your own just destiny. Just kind yeah. of. All right. Let's just take care of the games in front of us. Lakers are doing. I'm going to read a, a quote came from Darvin Ham yesterday. He said, "Our team spirit is at a very high level, the highest it's been in my opinion all year." Um, he was asked about LeBron and Anthony Davis about them playing today. Darvin Ham said, "In all likelihood, I'm sure they'll play." Yeah, th- this is... In t- all likely li- likelihood, I'm sure they'll play. They're going to play. With the okay. backs back, and, you know, seeing if they will play the back. In all likelihood, I'm sure... Th- Does that sound right? In all likelihood, In all likelihood I'm sure they'll play? I'm sure they'll play. <laughs> oh, okay. A run-on sentence, but yeah. Oh, yeah. In all likelihood, I'm sure they're going to play. Okay. What are they playing? They got Wizards tonight. Oh, or Wizards the, today. I'm not sure, but I'm sure they're going to play. Not the Pelicans. Not the Pelicans, Pelicans the last game. game of the season. Hold on to that one. Because <laughs> yeah. we still got one more shot on, at, uh, at playing that. Um, I, I think they'll play. I think they. it's almost that they, they have to play. There's just no margin for air left. If Even for as good as they're playing, if they have one hiccup, Golden State can move into that number True. nine spot. So yeah. they're, they're, in a, they're kind of in a unique position. But it is the best basketball that they've been playing all year. I want to give them credit. I know oh. the competition hasn't been all that good, but DeMarco, I've seen plenty of teams, including the Lakers, where the competition's not good. You play down to that competition. And you get beat or... You end yeah, up you end up losing or, or you it's a dogfight dog in the fight. fourth quarter. They had this... They played the Wizards at Crypto maybe a month ago, something like that. Game went into overtime. Yeah. Wizards, one of the worst teams in the NBA. Wizards actually randomly yesterday beat Milwaukee. I mean, it just kind of it, it happens in the NBA, so yeah. I, I don't want to. I want to give them credit because I think anytime you're in the league and you run off what they've been able to run off, whether you're at home or on the road, if you're five and one on this road trip and you're coming back to crypto and you still got some tough matchups left, it's the best basketball the Lakers have been playing. What do what they always say in sports? You want to be healthy and hot at the right time. Are they not? Are they not leaning towards that? That's exactly the Lakers. The Lakers yeah. are Sacramento. They just had Malik Monk and Kevin Herter get injured, so they're those two guys are not going to be there. Jamal Murray. I don't know the full story on Jamal Murray. I just know that he's not playing right now for the Denver Nuggets. We'll what see. is the story? He's got he's got knee issues. Knee issues. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Kawhi Leonard didn't play against the Sacramento Kings yesterday, and the Clippers sent him home. Because of his own knee issues. Wow. There are other teams. The Pelicans are trying to get Brandon Ingram back. Uh, sometimes things just happen, and it feels like for the Lakers, good things are happening their way at the right time, where Gabe Vincent just came back. We'll see when Vandal comes back, and they're playing good basketball. I think there's a little bit of optimism there. It doesn't mean, look, it's not going to guarantee them anything. But two months ago, I would not think they were in the spot in the sense of they're playing good basketball. They haven't moved in the standings. The standing hasn't changed yeah. much, but that's not because they've done something wrong. I, I But I like the outscoria mentality. I, I love it. I mean, I, I think it's easier to go that route with this team than let's try to lock in defensively and hope for a bunch of old guys. You no, know? they're just trying to outscore Yeah, you. and it, it, look, if I'm Phoenix or Golden State, I think you have to factor this in. I, we have to stay as hot as the Lakers to keep LeBron playing back-to-backs. Because the more he has to play back to back, the slower he's going to get at 39 years old, going into the postseason or the play-in. You think Braun has uh, headphones when he goes for <clears throat> his jogs or walks or anything? I don't think LeBron leaves his house for a walk. I think he's got everything he hey, needs in that compound. I think he probably owns like 
13 acres in Brentwood. You and, should try to walk with the speaker. You'll see it's a whole different world. You hear everything. You got music. It's fun. Sometimes I'll do one headphone. You want to hear stuff, what's going on around you, right? Yeah. Yeah. Just okay. have an idea. And I used to get those uh, those warnings from my iPhone, uh, uh, the, the hearing thing. It, oh, it's, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's exceeding the noise of, for oh. the week. So, yeah, I stopped. <laughs> Wait, what? Really? I don't, well, yeah, there's, so a, there's a warning. So my that sometimes if, like, my surroundings are too loud, it'll say, hey, warning, if you're at this level for X, uh, this amount of time, you can have hearing loss. Yeah, yeah. so I got three Damn. or four of them, and I started wondering, like, why am I wearing headphones? It's not for me. Well, it's for you. you. Turn down your headphones. Well, right. anyone here in this studio... Uh, you could ask Mace when he comes in. Uh, hearing loss, yeah, that's happening it goes. here. But when yeah. I'm walking, like, why am I wearing headphones? It's not for my benefit. I'm doing it so I won't disturb you. Mm -hmm. Well, the heck with you. Well, that's yeah, that's <laughs> over. You know what I mean? Yeah, that part's yeah, over. Right. <laughs> okay, ask the Marco coming up next. If you want to call in eight seven 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 ten ESPN, if you got a good question for Demarco Far. Um, we also got there's a, a big trade that went down in the NFL a little bit earlier today. Yeah. We still got Dodgers baseball that we're going to talk about. So hang out with us. Uh, stay right here, Travis and Sleeve Show. Demarco Far in seven ten ESPN. All right, Prize Picks. It's America's number one fantasy sports app with over three million active members. All you got to do is pick more or less than on two to six player stat projections and watch the winnings roll in. Here's what's cool. So I already got my picks. I do this before every Laker game. I already got my picks in for today's game. But I'm going to hold off on that for a quick second. Did you know you could win up to 100 times your money on price picks? With as little as four correct picks, you could turn $10 into $1,000 with pro basketball, hockey, college basketball entries today. Obviously, some, some great games going on in the NBA. Great games going on in co college basketball. Some big, big games coming up in uh, the women's on uh, Friday. You got Caitlin Clark, UConn, Iowa. So you, you can be active in all those games. Laker game today, Rui Hachimura, more than or less than 14 points. Rui's been balling, shooting over 50% from the field. I'll go more than there. Jordan Poole, more or less than 24.5 points. I'll go less on that one. I think the Lakers D him up, um, and I think they pay a lot of attention to him. Download the app today. Use that code 710 for a first deposit match of up to $100. That's code 710 on Prize Picks for a deposit match of up to 100 bucks. Pick more, pick less. It's that easy. Steve Mason and John.
Day Wednesday, Friday at 1045. Let's get to it. Ask Slee right now. <laughs> More pranks that DeMarco did? <laughs> no. No, 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 no. Uh, what do just you think? A How's ga- that? A gambling store. Unbelievable. Mm. Wow. <laughs> oh, my God. He said, mm. you, uh, yeah. Oh, my goodness. Wow. We'll leave it at that. We'll I, leave it I'm at just that. amazed at the, the whole how sports gambling has changed. It was so taboo, and now oh, yeah, it's yeah. the opposite way. Yeah. yeah, it's really weird. Okay, um, we got asked to Marco if you guys want to uh, chime in on the phone, 877-710-ESPN. Optimus Prime Rib. Optimus Prime Rib? Yeah, it's really good. As in the Autobot? But with Prime Rib. With Prime, with prime rib. rib. Okay. Yeah. Got okay, it. here we go. Does DeMarco carry all his grocery bags in order to not make multiple trips, and he uses his fingertips to open the door? You take your time. You go, you go to the grocery store. You got five, six bags there. That's a are neighbor. You, are you kind of coming back and forth, and you're calm, cool, and collective, or are you grabbing everything you possibly can, trying to get to the front door, making one trip? Optimus Prime Rib is a neighbor, because that's exactly what I do. I, it, that's, Why do we do that? It's part of the workout. Why are we idiots? It's part of the workout. It's, that's not a workout. I, I go work out, and then I head to the store. Uh-huh. This is part of the workout. I get another mile in the store, yeah. and then I load up, and then I have to carry it in the house. That's part of the workout. I might do curls on the way in. But yeah, that's somebody that those sees are some me. Strong bags. Bro, <laughs> plastic. Come on. With them. Yeah. What's in those bags, man? Stuff. You're just buying. Yeah. Healthy all, stuff. All flour. <laughs> yeah. Um I, I I do this all the time. I actually did this recently. I was down in San Diego. Come back. It's Sunday night. I'm trying to take everything in. Why Why are you just make a couple trips? Nah. It's fine. Nah, let's do one. I can't open the door. I got to put everything down. And orange comes rolling out. Like, what are you doing? You got to plan it, man. Put the key in your right pocket. Whatever hand you're going to use. Key I think there's a difference in how, how long you have to go from car to front of door. So, like, say you're in an apartment building and you have to walk through your garage yeah. and then walk down your hallway. If it's a little bit of a walk, I'll try to do it in one. Yeah. But if it's if I'm if I'm parked right by in my garage. Costco I trip. I don't a have Costco reasoning. I'm trips. a dumbass. Yeah. I have no reason. You all, you you ask for boxes when you're at uh, Costco. Well, yeah, that's that's a yeah. two tripper. Everything's big, so yeah. yeah. Right. But when they say they with, don't have, when they say yeah. they don't have boxes, they do. But when they yeah. say they don't, I don't know what to do. I'm like, you can't oh. put 15 items with nothing in there. Now I got to make 38 trips back to the house. Well, you like to make trips, like put you said. Put a little said. laundry basket in the back of your car, and then you're good so to go with uh, all that stuff. So, what's your record with ba- with bags, though? With plastic bags, without a plastic bag, maybe like maybe five or six. Yeah, I was gonna say four and eight arms is for me. Uh, uh, I don't know how with the weight wise. Like but dislocating four, four my finger. I did eleven bags. Oh, and I'm then also, that. um, yeah. I also don't do four bags, bags on each, and then I'll carry like a Tito, not Tito's, but like a, a cart, a crate, or something like that. Yeah. Were you like grunting like at the gym? Oh, I was running. I'm trying to get there. <laughs> yeah, with eleven bags. There's one on each finger. Did Two we? On one. Were we all doing the show together? Okay, DeMarco, just understand that I'm bringing this up. We're not going to spend a lot of time on it. Okay. But do you remember, like, a year plus ago, we did a show together? Yeah. And what was one of the themes of one of the shows? Oh, my God. Okay, just relax. Oh, my God. Everything's okay. At the grocery store, when you put the divider. I'm still hot Jorge, do you remember this? I don't. Okay, so. here a year ago. When you put. That's right. That's right. Okay. (laughs) When you put everything on um, the the conveyor, right? On the the belt. Do you use dividers? Do you put a divider for the person behind you? I don't put it. They do. Boom! Who's they? Mm. The person in front of me. (laughs) The person in front of you. I'm talking about the person behind you. The person behind behind you. you. Do you you put the cash register to do it? So you're not putting a divider well, either? They don't put it behind you. No. They just put it back into the... Yeah, yeah they right. just put it They put it in the line for the no. next person to come and put it. Right, but if uh, it depends on the cash register, the cashier. Okay. Because uh, the ones I've had, uh, maybe yep. it's a store, they put it for me. You guys should hang out. You guys, yeah, you guys are close friends. Yeah, you guys are close friends. I don't, I don't, I don't put it. Of this room, I yeah. trust him. M, you're done. Okay. I trust Al too. All right. Question yeah. from Chrissy. So it's not from me. So you can uh, trust Chrissy. Chrissy's great. So okay. she asks, you're t- you're at a 20 person dinner party at an important person's house. You're using the bathroom and the toilet starts to flood. Do you try to fix it yourself? Do you say something? Then, or do you just leave and never show your face again? So do you tell the owner of the home, hey, this happened, and you get someone to fix it with you? Do you fix it yourself or do you just leave? Yes. <laughs> all, yeah. all the above. It Got depends. It. Like what I did to I that posit. toilet. Can I fix it? It's if it's a mess and I made a mess. If I can slip out and like not let them know I did it. Oh yeah. 
great course of but action. Then, like, I can't leave. Later, like, where's Demarco? Oh, also the toilet's flooded. Yep. <laughs> well, d- 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 I oh, hope someone else. Demar- Demarco. Blame it on the next guy that goes I in. I can't leave the bathroom until it's it's repaired. I feel you, right? Until it's fixed. Yeah, you got to fix that. No, you don't feel me because you already left. You're already thirty if minutes away. If it's unfixable, if I if you what you did to this toilet is unfixable. And, like, you'll never live this down? <laughs> oh, yeah, it's MacGyver time. Let's I'm calling a plumber from in the restroom. You have? No, I'm saying oh. I would. Oh, I can't really? leave. Yeah, I can't I'm, leave. I'm slipping out the window and going back to the front door. Yeah. And then, like, blaming it on you. <laughs> <laughs> what do you got there, Ori? All right, Crypto Ray wants to know, uh, he says, walk me through your laundry routine. Detergent, liquid, pods, fabric softener, front load washer, dry sheets, folding, or do you do you fold your clothes right? Are you a fan? Are you a fan of doing laundry? Do I have to answer every question that comes in? No, no, just you know, what's your routine like? That's kind of invasive. This is what (laughs) asked Mark. You don't do your laundry, do you? I do do my laundry, but I don't want to tell you my routine, man. Well, what if you're giving out tips that other people don't know? We're not talking about it. This is setting yourself up for a joke. We're not talking. We're not talking about a high school prank where you took your cousin's girlfriend. Yeah, exactly. Is that a prank? See, you called it a prank. Okay. Hey, I put the clothes in, put the detergent, close it, turn it on, do and walk away. Do you use pods or do you use liquid detergent? I do not use pods. I okay. use uh, I, a scoop of the OxyClean. Yeah. Got it. Yeah. Uh, and, and some detergent, throw it in there. and see, Dryer cause balls? I, see, because I, I... I do use yeah. dryer balls. They're a pain, though. They are. Yeah, They're loud. Yeah, you use them, yeah. and yeah, they get loud. Yeah, but they do work, and then I fold immediately. Mine's a top wash. The, yeah. The, 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 I have to lift the lid and then let the water go in, then throw the detergent. Then I go get the clothes and start throwing them in there. You you do that? You actually yeah. let the water? Yeah, I, I, I never. I, I can't gotta wait. You got to let it foam and stuff. You do? Do you do well, that? I mean, I do. I don't do that. You just throw it in and soap yeah, and walk away. No, okay. but then, no, see, when you do that, like, sometimes the detergent gets stuck to certain clothes, and it's just like that. This is true. That's why your clothes look better than, than ours. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, mine is like, they smell good? That's good. That's, that's good. all. Yeah, yeah, that's all we need. Smell test. Yeah. Um, all right, we got uh, Hot and Cold coming up next. Stay right here at Travis and Sleeve Show, 710 ESPN. Radio station. And it is Travis and Sweetly. As you know, we've welcomed the new partner here at 710 ESPN, Next Gen. Next Gen, the official AC heat and plumbing company of SoCal sports fans. You're as cold as ice. Call 833-3-NEXTGEN or visit nextgenairandplumbing.com. Time for our feature we do three days a week at 12.30 p.m. Because you're hot and you're cold. Who's hot? Who's, who's cold? cold? Thanks to Next Gen. Boy, time for who's hot, who's cold. Take it away, producer M. All right, so what's hot? I know we talked about it a bit yesterday, but the I- Iowa LSU game, their wow. ratings came out, and it's insane. Okay? Wow. So the I- LSU Iowa game was the most watched women's college basketball game on record with 12.3 million <laughs> views on ESPN. It averaged more than NBA Finals at 11, 11.64, World Series 9.11. And Stanley Cup at 2.6. ESPN said the contest drew the second highest audience for any basketball game on the network since 2012. Wow. Trailing only Game 7 of the 20, 2018 Eastern Conference Finals between LeBron James and the Boston Celtics uh, from Sports Media Watch. Uh, that grew 13.6 million. Can, can, we, can we just Crazy. let that sink in for a quick second? That the only sporting event on ESPN or basketball game on the network was LeBron versus the Celtics. LeBron, who you're playing one of the most prestigious franchises, 
everybody knows the history of the Boston Celtics. You got LeBron, who's been the most popular player in the NBA easily over the last 20 years, just based upon his longevity, what he's done, NBA Finals appearances when he was coming to the NBA. That's the only game, that's the only basketball game that outdrew LSU Iowa. Unbelievable. What a cool moment. They really sold the heck out of that game and they did delivered. They? they did they sold the I don't the heck even think they it. needed to sell it. I'm saying that, that all year they sold that matchup. We well, couldn't wait for that. You you you're right on that, but I'm saying that by the time it just you saw the matchup coming. It's yeah. Caitlin Clark, it's LSU the defending champs, the storylines that were associated with LSU kind of sold itself, but what a what a proud moment I'm sure for a lot of those um, women that were not just a part of that game, but just women basketball in general. I like the competition, I, even though it spilled over and b- between the athletes on the floor. You know, there there was a competition there, but there was respect. Now, everything else that happened off the floor, all the nonsense that happened, that's just the world we live in right now. Right. But but that they, helped, didn't it? A big time, I, of course. Those storylines, I think, did add Horse layers Jorge. that weren't there. Hate sells fights, doesn't it? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, my oh, God. Sure. You're looking for hate. This and, is what you want. And I don't think they were – they didn't feel made up. No. Ever since uh, – what was her name at LSU that did the, the – Angel, Angel Reese. Reese. Ever since she did the You Can't See Me, they've been building towards that game, it's, and they paid it off. It's almost like the Bills Chiefs. You know you know the story. You know that one team's beaten the other team, and they've, they've taken their jabs at each other. Like You know that when this comes around, you're ready to go for this thing. So I'm, I'm really excited yeah. about these numbers. You That's know, great. Uh, numbers are numbers. I think cultural significance is really important, and again, carrying that over into the next stage of their career. I know we talked about that a little bit yesterday, but that's the most important thing. I hope... That we find ourselves at some point, and I think a lot of this is going to be on Caitlin Clark's shoulders because she seems to right now be, of course, there are some great women's college basketball players, but she's the first one. She's kind of the face of it all right now. She's going to end up in the WNBA. How that translates, I don't know. I don't, DeMarco, I don't know if we're, if you and I are going to find Indiana, ourselves. She's not in York or LA. Which, but by the way, I kind of like that. 1 million people right. tuned in exactly. to see her. I'm to sure watch Iowa LSU. That's going to carry over. Yeah. She's going to bring an audience to that sport that mm-hmm. I, I I would I would venture to say they haven't seen anybody with that sort of yeah. star power. Right. And she's good. Angel also declared today for the WNBA draft. Wow. So both Angel and Caitlin will be going to the draft this year, and uh, two teams will be very lucky for talented players. Magic and Bird again. Here we uh, go it's again. Awesome. We'll yeah. see. It's awesome. We'll see. Um, so the next up, uh, who's cold? Are the Brewers mascots? So a lot of um, a lot of baseball teams do this, but they have kind of like a mascot race. So they have these people that rec- represent whatever city they're from, and they go they go running around, and everyone's like, "Oh yay, go guys!" Um, and it's usually during uh, innings change. And so this happened yesterday. So it was Byron Buxton, uh, who I believe is a pitcher for the Twins, uh, <laughs> came out a little early from the dugout, wasn't really thinking about the mascots, and nearly got trucked by one of the mascots. Uh, but he had to get pulled back into the dugout at the last second. So uh, just what would have happened if he got hit over by a mascot? Would have been funny? Would have been like scary? What, what do you think? I thought, what well, if you've seen the video? So right, right when I was yeah. watching the video yesterday, um, I was like, "Does he not see these? I mean, <laughs> <laughs> how mascots? do you not see these mascots coming?" I'm like, "Is this, is this planned? Is it not planned?" It's also being announced in the PA. It's like, "Oh, here wow. we go. Here comes this he guy." He was locked in. I don't know what he was doing. Yeah. I, he was locked in or not locked in at all. Locked like I, I can't, I can't imagine which one it was. If he gets hit, I mean, can you imagine? I mean, look now. He's a Luckily, baseball nothing player. Happened. He's out for a month. Luckily, nothing happened. I yeah. was going to say, yeah. and if you had a situation <laughs> like that, it's like, all right, well, they got to change the way they, yeah. the angle of where these guys are running. Do you remember Ralphie the Buffalo from Colorado? Yeah, the Colorado Buffalo. Their yeah. mascot. That okay. thing almost ran the live us buffalo. over. Yeah. They, we went up there to play Colorado. They let that buffalo out, and it rounded a goalpost. So we were like, we're not going to move for this buffalo. <laughs> and that thing got closer and, and oh was not moving. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. And you realize the the handlers, they're not handling. They're being dragged. We all go diving over the bench. Yeah. Maybe this is my watching too much YouTube at times and yeah. seeing what animals, when they, you know, yeah. they're in like a state park or a national park. I'm going to get out of the way. Thank yeah. you. Yeah, By I'm the way, get out if you way. are someone that is going to go visit Yellowstone National Park or stop Grand National Parks, stop. stay away from from the bison, they will charge, and yep. people die every year trying to get cl- too close to these animals. Just by the way, we have a zoom on our phone fo- on, on our camera. We have a zoom. Stay in your car. Thank you. And freaking zoom from yeah. inside your car and call it. No, I'm the opposite. Go ahead. 
good. <laughs> it's good. <laughs> it is natural selection. Also, speaking, you know, I saw the video of the, you know that you guys were talking about, but earlier in the season, NBA season, there was a ball boy or like a towel boy mm-hmm. uh, from uh, the Spurs, I believe. He got in the way of Wemby as he was doing a layup. Oh Wemby yeah, Wemby stepped on him, turned his ankle, turned his ankle. He didn't play. Yep. So what happens to that person, that ball boy, that you know, that employee? Well, like, like who's you know? Do you see what I'm saying? Like, it, it's, yeah. it's one the of those pro- situations where like it's such they a might freak. not even be a, yeah. they might not even be paid. They might be a volunteer, right? And, yeah. Literally, so such a freak accident yeah. that I mean, I, I'm more concerned. NBA is a good example where they have like the photographers and yep. everything else. Everybody's so close. Like easily, you feel like somebody could turn their ankle. I don't know what happened to that poor kid, but right when I saw that, that was a nasty televised game. They pulled Wemby out. In my head, I'm like, please tell oh me, please God. tell me he's good. You know you're fired though, right? You know you're fired. You think so? Well, what if you're 14? You just hurt Wimby. What you're if you're fired. 14 and also you don't? You're a volunteer, not yeah, like fired. volunteered. Just... You can follow a vi- you can fire a volunteer. Don't come back tomorrow. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I mean, he's how like would you want to come back if you hurt the franchise? He's the ball boy now for the G League. <laughs> right, right. He got moved you're down. Done. Oh my he got God. moved down the farm <laughs> system. It's like when Larry David in the in curb where he stretched out his legs and he injured Shaq. You know? wow. I mean, I'm surprised. Honestly, that stuff doesn't happen more. Yeah, I'm with you. The drink lady. I judge people in the NFL by by this when they run over people on the sidelines and. And they yeah. never help them up. That drives me crazy. Yeah, I'm with you. If it's you like a 65 year old cameraman. Old guys, line yeah, judges, and you yeah. run them. Make sure the guy's okay, right? right. Before mm-hmm. you turn around and run back to the huddle. Yeah. There is, <laughs> I can't really watch too much of it, but there's videos on YouTube where it's just, that's all it is. It's like a camera, it's, it's like a reporter with her back turned to the NFL players. Yeah. And all of a sudden the play comes to her and they knock her down. It's like, geez, no, no more. It happened to someone in my sorority when I was at college that she got trucked by a player. Uh, she was a football, she was a, a, like a water girl for the football team. And yeah, got trucked right in the middle. She got hit in the stomach by someone. But again, she's on the sideline. She's getting paid. So at least she got paid. For DeMarco Look, I will help. down there all the time. You better stay on your feet. Yeah. These dudes come What's off the you? field flying. DeMarco will help that person up, but he will not give you a divider at the grocery store. Or you saying Bolt. He helped out the, uh, he the high fives the, all the volunteers. for the I love that. Right. That mm-hmm. was cool. Tennis That's players cool. I can't stand. When they start abusing the little kids and throwing stuff at them, yeah. it drives yeah, me nuts. Come on, stupid. man. Sometimes, so they're just, yeah, they're, they're a different breed. So another thing that's cold uh, is, have you guys heard this wristband gate? With the Oakland yeah. A's. All right, so... What is it? Uh, What's the name know, of the bar? Last, the Last Dive Bar. Last so the Dive last Bar. The Last Dive Bar uh, was part of the people behind the original opening day um, protest that they had in the parking lot. So they had you know, the party in the parking lot sponsored by Last Dive Bar, who's had a close relationship with the A's before they decided to move. So they have made sponsored gear for them before. They've hosted parties for the A's. They had a close relationship. Then when the A's decided to move out of Oakland, that, that relationship, relationship was, was severed yep. because it's there, there for the fans. And the Oakland fans were not happy, obviously, with the move to uh, the potential move to Vegas. So... They were giving out wristbands, saying "Last Dive Bar," explaining like basically it's a sol- it's a symbol of solidarity with the fans in Oakland that we want to stay here. If you're wearing the wristband, it's a solidarity with the fans. So two players, uh, Ruiz and Rooker, wore the Last Dive Bar's wristband at uh, their game, mm-hmm. and then coincidentally, both those players either got benched or put down. And it's not because due to lack of talent. It seems as if it's due to kind of a message being thrown the way of Ruiz and Rooker. And then additionally, last night, a um, PR run of show was uh, surfaced on Twitter. And it kind of had an explanation of where the promotional people's goals were for the night. And one of them was product. And it says, if you see anything that says, quote unquote, rooted in Oakland, it must be taken down immediately. And try not to highlight product that focuses on the name of Oakland. What are we doing here? You're still in Oakland. As far as I know, you're playing games there. So why not let the fans at least experience and be angry a little bit? It just seems stupid. It's mean. (laughs) DeMarco, I don't know of another... It's actually the thing I hate most about sports is that fans have no say if an owner decides, I'm picking up and I'm leaving the city. I don't care how much we mean to the city. I don't care how much you've raised my net worth because of the city. I don't care how much money you've spent coming and supporting my team. If I want to pick up and leave, I'm going to pick up and leave. I can't. I, it really is. The, it's the worst thing for, in my opinion, about sports is that alone. Do you know of another public relations disaster the way the Oakland A's and that no, ownership is handling not things. not like that. That's ugly. It's mean. It's terrible. It's been going on for a long time. Yeah. It's like you broke up with somebody, yeah. but you are you still got 
four more, five more years, uh, you're living together for they the next four the or Raiders, five years. They lost the Raiders, yeah, they lost the Warriors, and they're losing the A's. Years. It's just, it's terrible. It's, it's horrible. Um, but I would go one more. I think it's worse on the players. You think it's worse on the fans? Like the the, the fans are mad at the players. The players have no say. I don't they think, have even you, less you, say than the fans. I don't think the fans are mad at the players. Let, let me give you let me give you a good well, example. It, it's, like it's, if, it's, if, if you're walking into work, right? Just yep. say you're in Oakland A, and yep. you're walking into work, and somebody from the last dive bar is out there, and you know all of them. They're nice people. You've done promotions with them, and they hand you a wristband, and you take it. What are you supposed to do? Not wear it? Not represent the people that love you because no, the team says no? Yeah, I'm putting it on. Exactly. But yeah. if you do... You get sent down. Yeah, but that's, that's you're, you're saying ownership, their yeah. their relationship with the players. I'm I'm with you on that. But I, I remember when the Chargers was basically announced they're going to be moving from San Diego to devastating for San Diego. Still is and will always be. Yeah. Um, there was no hate towards Philip Rivers. There was no hate towards some of these guys that you know. It, it wasn't their decision. They didn't have a choice. Not directly, but there is. When How pe- so? When people say, I will no longer support this team, even though Phillip Rivers is still playing for the Chargers. Sure. So indirectly, you are saying, I'm I'm done with you. That's what I mean. It's it's even tougher on the players. That's a good point. And the one person I guarantee who was not consulted about a move from mm-hmm. San Diego to L.A. was Phillip Rivers. Of course. Yeah. He's a quarterback. That's yeah, what I mean. It's rough. He his whole family. I think he stayed yeah, in he San did Diego. Stay. Yeah, he did. He stayed LA. his family. Kept him there. Okay, Han Cold is brought to you by Next Gen. The official heat and plumbing company of SoCal sports fans. Call 833-3-NEXTGEN. That's 833-3-N-E-X-G-E-N. Or go to nextgenairandplumbing.com. Um, we'll talk a little NFL. A lot kind of went down here this morning. Yeah. A big trade that went down between the Buffalo Bills and the Houston Texans. Um Want to kind of tie this in a little bit to the Rams and how Rams and the Chargers, how that that can have an effect in the Wait, AFC M, for the Chargers. What's the Jets head coach again? Sala. Sala. You kind of look like Robert Sala. Okay, I'll take that. Has anybody yeah. ever said that, that before? Bald. Yeah. Bald. Is that it? Yeah, That's the only. Okay. Yeah. Never mind. Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, Em. I'm just saying. Give me a little bit. That's why they connect. Give me a little bit here. Bald. All right, we'll talk about how I don't look like <laughs> the Jets head coach coming up next. Stay right here. Travis and Sleeve Show, 710 ESPN.
Oh, I know oh, this geez. one. What the hell is this? I know this one. It's what not are we Field doing? Dreams. No, it's not Field of Dreams. What the heck are we doing? Wait, it's gonna build. I know this one. Oh, Jorge. Jurassic uh, Park. Yes, oh, gotcha. yes. <laughs> <laughs> Two in a row. I do not know Jurassic nice. Park. It's the Keyshawn theme. I have to wait for that part. You said it's the Keyshawn theme? <laughs> yeah, so we used to call him Blue back in the morning. Then. Oh, my God. <laughs> Blue the Raptor. Wow. Because he used to do the sound effect. Wow. <laughs> I don't know anybody who's ever watched Jurassic Park and didn't love it. It's one of those like universally beloved oh, Jurassic Park the was first movies. One. The first one, yeah. Yeah, okay. One. Not the franchise as a whole. The franchise as a whole has gone through its ups and downs, but yeah. very first I'm with Jurassic you. Park. I don't I'm know with if you anybody who doesn't yeah, yeah. love Jurassic Park. The, the beginning, yes. I Where love you now, not so much. Is right. there any more like universally beloved movie than the original Jurassic Park? I can't really think of one because everybody wants to disagree on some things. Do people. Hmm. That's a good question. Did everyone yeah. now? But I think this is too kind of. Did everyone love the Matrix? I feel the like first a lot one, of people. Yes. I think everybody loves the original Matrix. By the way, they just announced a fifth Matrix, but not with the original directors. Okay. Which is the first one that's not with the original directors. Yeah, that's one I could think. Of. I, I never really heard anybody say anything bad about the Matrix. No, the second one, yes. The third one, definitely. But the first I, one was yeah. mind blowing. Anything after the first one, it's like tough to. Yeah. How about Rocky? I don't like Rocky. <laughs> yeah, what? Dude, I've never seen. Yeah. You've the never whole, seen Rocky? I've, I've never seen a whole... I've seen... DeMarco, I think we're the only person. ones. Yeah. You've never seen a Rocky? Not one of them? Nah. Do you yourself like a favor. Him, no, you'll like number him. number three. Well, actually, I don't know if you'll see, like see, him. Will he like saying, him? That's what I'm saying. Yes. Start with number three. Why? Because Why? Mr. T playing Club Listen, Leg. <laughs> start with number three. Yeah. Fast forward 45 uh -huh. minutes in. Yeah. It's skip, like Star Wars. Start skip with four. number three. Like, no. Yeah, skip four and five. Start with three and then go back to one and Never two. Saw Rocky. Yeah. yeah. How do you not see Rocky? Uh, I, I, I checked out. I was really yeah, I was okay. Too young for it. You know, I just we we used to joke around with Funches. Yeah. Godfather. Michael Funches here. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, God for He never saw Star Wars, Wars right? Loved. He I never. Is, yeah, yeah. That's that's a good. What? He Wizard never saw. He never saw Godfather. Uh. So we're like Funch. Listen, like we're not always pressuring you. Just go see Godfather. It's it's Godfather. Yeah. And he's like, all right. He's like, all right. I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna do it. Yeah. And they told us he did it, but I think we're all still suspicious that we're <laughs> yeah, all like, I don't think he he didn't see it, or like maybe he saw like an hour and then that was it. Wow, yeah. come on! The now. only commentary he had was that it was three hours long, and I was like, okay, fun, just. That's probably not a good <laughs> wow. sign then. But I think you're right. I don't. I can't remember anybody saying anything bad about Jurassic it rips. Park. It yeah. Rips. yeah, it's great. And Die Hard too. <laughs> and Die Hard <laughs> die two. Hard. Die Hard two. Die Hard 2 or Die remember. Hard? I don't even remember oh. Die Hard 2. What do you think of uh, the trade that went down today? So the Bills trade, Stephon Diggs to the Texans. Texans making some moves. They give Texas up a 2025 second round pick and a 2025 fifth and sixth round picks. Bills will carry about $30 plus million plus in dead money for Diggs. What do you make of it? Um, I think what okay, Diggs has got a, is bringing a contract four year seventy five million dollar contract. What what do you make make of it for both teams and the AFC in general? Well, I look, it's early. What are we in April? I mean, this is April football talk. Yeah, so the first I, reporters came yesterday. Yeah, so I would say this that the Texans are winning the off season. How much have they spent this off season in free agent acquisitions? Like one hundred and fifty yeah, million it's, bucks. It's definitely over a hundred. They are going all in on C.J. Stroud and D'Amico Ryan. So I think you should before the economics of football catches up to you. Okay, explain that because yeah. I think the and Jorge should be he should be. It's in a good on this example, but it, it, explain next. the economics part of it because not every team is in this position. Houston's in a very unique position, you advantageous position. You have a great quarterback, and he's cheap. He's young, cheap, and good. So you go all in. That Build now you, around him. You can pay a defense. You can pay a left tackle. You can pay a Stefan Diggs. You can bring all of this talent uh, to Houston and go all in on winning. You, and that's your what window Purdy, is open now. That's right. what Purdy allowed for the Niners. Correct. Now, mm -hmm. it's going to end once you pay Purdy. And I don't know where he sits. Do you pay him the big money? If he when he's up talking he's about Brock Purdy, to you, bro. he's not listening not to listening me. To yeah. Do you pay him he big money? He doesn't want to talk to you. He doesn't want. He <laughs> nope. hates talking. He, he doesn't want to talk to you. We're talking about. Come on, get in here. We had a tweet. Yeah, we, no, we, we, no, yeah, no, no, no. You guys are fine. I'm just saying he doesn't <laughs> want to talk to you. You're a Niners fan. Would yeah, you pay just, Brock Purdy right now? Like if uh, sure, yeah. If it cost you a Kittle, if it cost you a Debo, cost you Kittle or Debo, maybe not. See, but the economics of football, like in Houston, at some point you're going to have to pay C.J. Stroud. You're going to have to pay your quarterback, and when you do, you're going to start to hemorrhage good players. So, like in Buffalo, 
you better hope when you start losing these good players like Stephon Diggs, your quarterback is not only good, he's transcendent. Mm. He can make players better. He can do what Aaron Rodgers did in Green Bay. Whatever you bring me, I'm going to make them better. You could do what what Mahomes is doing is, hey, if I lose a piece or two, I, we're still going to keep. We're still going to be very, very good. Yeah. Do you believe in that for Josh Allen? Do you think Josh Allen can do that? Can be that guy in Buffalo? Okay, so there's one thing that separates Josh Allen from Patrick Mahomes because I think they're both great quarterbacks. If you had to pick between the two. Uh, for one guy to be your starter, I yeah. wouldn't mind picking second. Either way, you're going to be good. The really? That, you wouldn't mind picking second? I would not mind picking second. Because if you get Mahomes, I got him, I still feel good. If I get Josh Allen and you get Mahomes, I still feel good. I the would assume, is, I would assume yeah. and you are going to know this much better than I would, I would assume that's not even a conversation. Of course you're taking Mahomes before Josh Allen. Well, most people would. I mean, mm-hmm. they're, they're go, they went back-to-back, back and they have a chance for a, a three-peat. It's never happened. In the NFL, something to look out. I don't for. even know they're really in the the. If you look at the conversations, yeah. it's Patrick Mahomes, and then there's a gap between who that second quarterback is. I think there's only about what? Let me see. One, two, three, four. This is off the top of my head. Six or seven teams that would not trade their starter for Josh Allen right now. Yeah, everyone else would in a heartbeat. That's he is that. That's good. a lot, right? Yeah, he's big, strong, but that's fast, but, but that's a lot too. In the sense you said, there's only six or seven teams in the league. That would not trade their quarterback for Josh that, Allen. That puts him in the top ten, top eight. That's mm-hmm. the way I feel. And Mahomes is in there, probably at the top. So either way, I don't mind picking second. The thing that separates them in my in my mind is Andy Reid. Mm. Andy Reid being with Patrick Mahomes in Kansas City. That's the, a game changer. And the that's... culture they have. There's no re, there's no secret as to why they're so good and have a chance for a three peat. But in Buffalo, when you start paying that one guy, the economics of, of football. You're going to start to hemorrhage good players around him. That's what's happening there. So in Houston, it's the opposite. You've got a good quarterback that's functional that's on the cheap right now. Yeah. So you go all in and you supplement that as much as you can and try to get one out out of this window. Are Rams in a in any spot like this in a couple of years where they're trying to figure out? Listen, Matthew Stafford has been excellent. He's been amazing. He is aging. He is older. Yeah. Um, of course, anytime you're at that age as well and you're a quarterback, injury prone, make sure that line is good. Things happen. But is there a, hey, we really, really got to start thinking about who's next for the Los Angeles Rams coming from a, from a from a, uh, well, a draft perspective? Question for the room. I mean, would you sacrifice your future, say the next five years, or your chance at not struggling going to the bottom of the league? Would okay. you sacrifice that for a chance to win right now? So I'll say, look, in 2025, 2026, okay. you're going to be with a rookie quarterback mm-hmm. that you don't know, and you're going to start with him, which means you're probably going to be bad in 25, 26, 27. Would you sacrifice those years and go through that for a chance to win this season right now? Yes. Me too. That's mm-hmm. the smart move. Would you? Yeah, basically go all in for this year to win a Super Bowl, then knowing that you're not going to have, you're going to be bad for the next two years. Correct. I mean, we already tasted a little bit of that with the, with the Rams, mm-hmm. like when they won the Super Bowl and they had a terrible year the next year. But and we thought last right year was going to be bad, and and right. listen, Stafford was there, and and they were able to make it happen. I I think as long as you have, let's put it this way, why would you have Stafford and 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 what's the point of having him as your quarterback unless you are all in? Right, because if right. if you're not all in, then why don't you just start that process tomorrow? Yeah. So I I think yes, you, you're all in with Stafford until Stafford's not there. So that's a, a a long way of saying when you get to the draft at the end of this month, and you've got Michael Penix and Lotu from UCLA. Sure, it's an easy choice. You take Lotu. I'm with you, and you go win now because that's going to help you to or that's going to help you Correct. this yeah. season rather than looking. Couple Michael years Penix down the road. will help you through that 25, 26, 27. I would say, who cares? What do you think the Rams do? I think they're going to go all in and try yeah, to win so right too. now. I, I think that's the smart thing. Why not? You have Matthew Stafford for a limited amount of time. And it's so hard to yeah. find a quarterback that works. Matthew Stafford works. As long as he's upright, he works. Yeah, and I think he's special, too. Yeah, I no, do. Yeah, he's, yeah. He's, he's he's way above average. He's yes. a very good quarterback. But as long as he stays upright, he's great. The, the Bills are in the worst position possible because they have an incredible talent in their quarterback. 
but they just can't get it done, and they keep on run, running into the wall of Patrick Mahomes year after year, and they just can't get over it. And what do you do to get over it? You you give away Stephon Diggs. I know go. he's off the field an issue because he just just butts head with everybody in the organization, but he's incredible talent. So you, you get you take away your best receiver. The receivers they don't have receivers. No, I like Curtis the other Samuel. part of your 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 conversation because I think Sean McDermott is on borrowed time there. Yeah, yeah. Right. But who would be the next coach I hire in Buffalo with that quarterback? You have three great court, uh, coaches on Still the market. Still out there. You have Bill Belichick, you have Mike Vrabel, and then you have Pete Carroll. If you want Bill Belichick right now, finish out the rest of the season, maybe do two more years, get him to that record that he always wants. See? He could do it in Buffalo. Wild, now that's why, a hot seat. But Not why, here but in then, L.A. Then, with why, Darvin why wouldn't That's they, a hot seat. Why wouldn't, they do, why wouldn't they have done that in the offseason then? Like what? What is beneficial to wait? And let's say the Bills start out 2-2 two and two and they don't look good. What what's the benefit what was there, of okay, was Bill wants to have complete control of the organization. So mm-hmm. knowing that if they go for Bill um and keep Sean McDermott for the season, they know that But there's such a risk of there's such a risk of trying to you know, how many games in do you make a decision like that of saying, No, we gotta punt Four, we gotta if it's get bad? a new, we gotta get a new I mean, what if it's not bad? What if it's average? If you're getting embarrassed and it's bad What if it's not that? What if you're three and two through five games but you also know that you know what, gets, we we only have a ceiling our ceiling is then fire what it is. the guy and get started on your next coach now. Go ahead. If you lost confidence in your guy, like this ship is never going where I think it's gonna go, fire yeah. him now. But Buffalo was what last year? What was their record? Uh, I can look it see. up. I'm but they, it they, they got they had a kind of rocky record to start the year. They had some weird losses. They were but eleven and six. They had some eleven weird losses. losses. I, you can't year, fire a guy after eleven sure. wins. Sure. So I mean, but their thing is Remember like here with the did Dodgers, it with Marty Schoenheimer, fourteen and two. Right. It's championship or bust in good. Baltimore or in, in Buffalo right now. So yeah, I think that's what happens if they don't make the postseason. They yep. fire the coach and then they move on with another. I mean, one. there was whispers about Sean McDermott that whole season, especially when that you know article came out about yep. that weird thing he said to his team, uh, making an analogy with September 11th yeah. and yeah, oh, something and he, like that. Yeah, yeah. basically putting their in, brains in the mind of the people. Uh, yeah, not a good, yeah, yeah, it was very. It was so strange. Well, they won five straight to end the season. It, they got hot. Why yeah. would that story come out unless you're trying to? flush out a coach so it's it's there's things in the air and with sean mcdermott that again if they don't do it this year he's out all right we got factor cap coming up next day right here travis and sleeve show 710 espn
Fizz A Cap. Welcome to Factor Cap. Hey guys. Uh, I know this is a big surprise to all of you, but I saw a movie yesterday. I oh. saw <laughs> I Godzilla and Kong, a new empire. And? Let's go. Uh, yeah. Impossible. Okay. Anything having to do with humans sucked. Anything having to do with these monsters fighting each other was the best. Rocked. They, really? They fought on the pyramids. They oh, fought nice. On the pyramids in, in Egypt, like throwing each other into oh, these pyramids. Not the Mexican in Cairo. Ones? This is based uh, off it. <laughs> this is based off a true story. It is. Yeah. Of course it is. Yep. You didn't know that? Um, Real stuff. So it got me thinking. They go to all these different like major cities. Like they 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 destroy Rio de Janeiro. So, um, in comic book films and in monster films, a lot of times they have they use the same city. So Gotham City is essentially New York City or Chicago. Uh, New York City gets destroyed in, in Marvel's universe. Um, Tokyo gets destroyed by Godzilla all the time. Yep. So it got me thinking. Tokyo is the de- most destroyed movie in film. Okay, I'm I'm not gonna count like war films. Most destroyed like, city. Most destroyed city in film. Uh, Alan Factor Cap. Ooh, wait a minute. Hmm. That's good. Let me see. I'm trying to think between New York City. I'm trying to think of action going on in New York City for some of these movies. Yeah. Escape from New York. A lot of the uh, Batmans Bat- and uh, yeah, yeah, things get blocked off. I- I'll go fact. I think it is Tokyo because I-, I do feel like a lot of the films, and maybe this is just uh, Godzilla minus one, which I just recently yeah. saw too, where a lot of that is in in Japan, different yeah. parts of Japan, but specifically Tokyo as well. I'll go fact. I think that's where a lot of uh, a lot of the action's happening. Because Godzilla does attack Godzilla uh, no, Tokyo a ton. A, yep. a lot. And like the, the the American, we kind of vary our cities in San Francisco, New York, Chicago, LA. Yeah. Uh, we uh, share see, our destruction. Are we just talking monster movies and superheroes? I'm talking monster movies and superheroes. I'm not counting war movies and like based on real event stuff. I'm talking oh. about non fictionalized attacks on What about cities. the Transformers movies? Where does that take place? Uh, all Cybertron. Over Same, right? Yeah. And then, like, the part of the Midwest somewhere. Uh, I gotta go fact, I think. Mm-hmm. Just from sheer number of movies and monster movies that have come out of Japan. Yeah. It seems like they yeah. all Tokyo always gets crushed first, but I'm sure NYC is right there in second place. Because I was gonna say, Gotham is attacked almost every episode, and yeah. Gotham is New York City, so... Yeah. I don't know. What did uh, the Joker say? Decent people shouldn't live here? <laughs> I think he's right. right. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> Jorge, what do you say? Uh, fact. If it's monsters and stuff, yeah, it's got to be to- uh, Tokyo. So, fact. I'm, I'm with the guys on the yeah. screen. Okay. All right. So, also in the movie, uh, it's, again, like I said, all the human parts were terrible. Like, just absolutely plot didn't make any sense. But when, whenever those monsters were on screen fighting each other, amazing. So, one of the human parts is that uh, this woman is talking to her daughter. They talk in sign language to her. The daughter is deaf. And so they're talking in sign language. And then they has the most obvious product placement for Volkswagen I've ever seen in a movie of all time. It just looks like it's shot like it's a, you know, um, a commercial. And you say, oh, love this Volkswagen. Like basically The bottom the just says like 0% APR on really? used. <laughs> sign and drive event happening right now. Wow. Uh, honestly, a close runner up is Barbie because Barbie uh, had a very clear scene where they are getting to a Ford in a car chase. Yep. And it's kind of a product placement. So you notice very obvious product placements in life in TV shows and in movies. Uh, DeRocco, oh, Factor Cap. Fact. Yeah. And it's so obvious. It's getting worse, right? Pretty much, With yeah. the product placement, it's getting terrible. Yeah. What was that movie? It was subtle, but it introduced the Mini Coopers to the world. The Italian job. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Right. I mean, it's fun, right? I want to drive one of those cars, but then you realize I could actually buy that thing. That's so funny. So, like, um, at the amusement park near where I grew up called, uh, it used to be called, it's called King's Dominion. It's owned by Paramount. They have a ride called the Italian job. Really? Where you're in a Mini Cooper. And a Mini Cooper. And it goes really fast. And uh, every yeah. Bond movie, isn't that Basically, product placement for the car he's Pretty driving much. and stuff. Yeah. Al, what do you think? Okay, fact. One of the funniest ones was Talladega Nights, and it <laughs> was just, you know, they're obviously doing it, and that's part yeah. of the whole gig. But I'll tell you the one that I've noticed more and more lately, and it's become more and more obvious. If you watch Braun lately, do any post game interviews? Yeah. It's LeBron. 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 I know LeBron for you, but it's LeBron. Have you noticed? Is that Does that make people mad? That's, that's twice now. Are you, you, are you not supposed to call him Bron? I, I don't know. Oh, Le, LeBron. So, Bron. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Kobe, Bron. Have you noticed in a post game interview what he has in his locker room? So, here at yeah. Crypto, what he has in his locker room. What's he putting up there? So, 
you know, he has his, um, he has the podcast slash video that he does, the barbershop. Oh, he, shop. does he have a thing? So now he has a product line ah. that's basically male grooming. male grooming. So he's got all these products now in the background of his locker. So every time after a game, media comes to interview him. Listen, it's smart. Uh, I mean, it's Brilliant. the right thing to do. Yeah. The shop, that's what the product line is called. It's in the background. So, M, to answer your question, I'm noticing it a lot more and because I'm noticing a lot of athletes trying to promote their brand. It was D'Angelo Russell last year oh, in the playoffs. D-Lo, actually. D-Lo. Kept putting. D'Lo? <laughs> joking. Wow. Kept putting his, his electrolyte drink up there. His yeah. electrolyte drink there. And, and Tanisha Cooper, who's who's part of the public relations, was like, you can't keep bringing this out. Like, she would take it. But that was yeah, good yeah. pub for him, even in that little You're moment. You're really supportive so, of this, right? Oh, I don't mind it at all. As we sit in this room, <laughs> yeah, I, I don't mind it. Uh, Chris will do it all the time, right? right? No he'll doubt. put he'll put different partners that we have. Yes. He'll put the product placement. So yeah, I definitely notice. Of course. It. Okay. Yeah, you actually make it a game now. Like when I'm watching the movie with Brenda, I was like, oh look, what product is? It? She's like, oh, it's Pepsi. It's there on purpose. Yeah. Oh my gosh, Madam Webs was yeah. so bad. Uh, I didn't know. Um, <laughs> Et was product placement with yeah, M and M's. I had no idea. Was it Reese's? Reese's Pieces. Yeah, it's yeah. Reese's Pieces. That one. Yeah, yeah. big deal. Um, all right, so uh, Brian Windhorst was on the really big show featuring Riz in, on ESPN in Cleveland, uh, and they are talking about a bunch of things, but Brian's going to be in Cleveland uh, this weekend, and there's going to be an eclipse. And so he's talking about how everyone's freaking out over the traffic in Cleveland with this eclipse happening. So this is uh, the clip of Brian. Why is the eclipse causing traffic problems? I'm getting in on Sunday. But, like, I'm being warned, like, oh, my God, the traffic. I'm like, I the sun's out everywhere, and no, I was no. just reading about it. It's a, it's a, no, no, it's a hundred mile wide swath. Yeah, how many people are coming here? Is it half it, a million to a million, Wendy? Guys, I'm in San Antonio right now. It's hitting here too. You can look at this, the map. It's going to be totality here too. Okay. Nobody's acting like a fool. <laughs> Right, I don't know. Cleveland's a hotbed for the eclipse. I don't know. What if it's cloudy? Everybody's screwed. And well, by the way, Brian, you want to cloudy. know what the forecast is? Mostly cloudy. Yes, because it's Cleveland in the spring. <laughs> wow. All right, so Brian Windows has a point. Uh, Jorge Federcap. Fact. If it's, I mean... <laughs> Okay, like, int- don't freak out over the eclipse. It's right. going to be fine. The, the, you don't have to have traffic problems. It is going to be fine. Like, who watches the eclipse anyway? Like, you, you got to buy these glasses for it anyway. <laughs> interesting fact about the eclipse, it'll be at 11, 11 on the dot. Really? Okay. Yeah. Interesting wow. Fact about it. Yeah. So you know about the eclipse. Yeah, exactly. But I don't have the glasses for it, and I'm not going to buy them either. They're like 30 bucks or something. Al, what do you think? I cap. I think people freak out. Okay. We, yeah. we could say, if you say there's rain coming on Saturday, people are going to freak out for a couple of days. Oh, my gosh. What are we going to do? Like, rain I don't think Friday, this is... This is uncommon. That's right. It is coming up Friday. Friday, I don't think it's uncommon. The fact that it is a solar eclipse, it's not something that happens all the time. I'm not surprised by it. I think it's hilarious that Windhorse is calling out Cleveland, Ohio, and basically saying, what the hell is wrong with you guys? We got this in San Antonio as well. Everybody relax. But I'm not surprised that people are freaking out Windhorse has crossed over into curmudgeon land, isn't he? Yeah, yeah, he's there. He's there. (laughs) Enjoy it, man. It's fun. Didn't we just have something like that a month ago here? Okay. Not an eclipse, but something. I don't know. That park I walk in, that when the, there were people out there with these things looking up at the sky. I think something SpaceX happened. was doing something. <laughs> yeah. I know that, but I don't know what they're doing. Okay. They're launching whatever yeah, they're Something launching. like that. But yeah, come on, Windhorse. Enjoy that. Yeah, I just think the final line of, uh, you know, it's Cleveland in spring. It's going to be cloudy. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, so that, that's my that's my factor cast for today. All right. Um, so short show today. I know we mentioned that uh, pregame show is going to start at two thirty. So we're going to go till twelve twelve. We're going to do super cross talk here in just a, a, a couple of minutes as well. But coming up next, we got the dump. Stay right here, Travis and Sleeva Show, seven ten ESPN. Black.
For everything we haven't gotten to today, yes, it's time for the dump. Okay, DeMarco, a couple things. I'm going to start off with this one because yesterday was National Peanut Butter and Jelly Day. Yes. So we had a nice connection with that. you showed me the picture Showed you a photo. Had one yesterday. I was motivated by it. You know what today is? What? National Walking Day. Is it really? Bro, this is your day. National Walking Day. Okay, so... I didn't know that. I'm going to go away from you for a second. Yeah. Nothing you did wrong. Text to Trav. Yeah. I see how how things are going. He said that he walked 27,000 steps yesterday. 27,000 steps. That's like 11 miles. I was going to say, that's got to be 12 miles, something like that. (laughs) Good for him. Did his car break down? What happened? He just walked all day. He just walked all day. 27,000 yeah. steps. I brought this up the other day because okay. he's told us the story a lot where, you know, when he was in a point of crisis before, he lost a lot of weight, got really into CrossFit, yep. was marathon training. Should we be worried about Travis that he is walking so much? No, I'll tell you what. he is doing 11 miles is a lot. No, that's a lot. 11 Whoa. miles is a lot. 11 miles of just walking, that's I a looked, lot of walking. There were actually walking marathons. Oh, yeah, my, my aunt does it. My aunt does walking yeah. halves and marathons. So yeah. They told me, like, the cutoff is you have and to I do... And I still worry about her. You have to do 15-minute miles. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, that's so that's four miles an hour for a marathon. I'd be that's off not by, easy. like, a, yeah, by like a minute and a half. Yeah. Like, 16 and a half will be my pace. But yeah, I should we be back. worried about uh, Travis? Let's I don't think we should be worried. I don't think we should be worried because he kind of told us this was a beginning of the year thing. He said... You motivated him. Yeah. The fact that you were walking as much as you were, you were dropping some LBs, and you gave him a little bit of path of how to do it and what you're doing. I think if if it wasn't that story and it didn't kind of start at January 1st, okay. I see where you're going Here's with this, but I feel like there's some things lining up here. What? What are you trying his to say? last son is graduating in a month, and maybe he's a little worried about being an empty nester. Having a different phase of his life, and what he's could trying happen? to, you know, I, could know. I think he's preparing. Things. He's not worried. He's preparing. I don't no, know. I, I think there's a little bit of like Trav, three days a week is like I got to go. Where are you going? We well, got Michael's baseball game. Yeah. What uh, happens when those are done? What happens when you're walking 11 miles a day? I think he's going to be yeah. cranking yeah. out 27,000. I'm okay. Maybe you might be onto something. Yeah, just a little, little a- a- empty nester anxiety coming yeah. out. Um, okay, Eddie, Mur- Eddie Murphy's birthday, 63 years old. Eddie, 63. Wow. 63 years old. Your favorite. For it's this one's easy for me. Yeah. I have a close second, just because I liked that movie back in the day. Yeah. Your favorite Eddie Murphy movie. Do the stand-ups count? Sure, yeah. Yeah, then Delirious, uh, mm. when he burst onto the scene. What was the second one? I forgot. Mm. Yeah, there was another one. <laughs> Delirious. Delirious. Too. Um, <laughs> there was another one. Yeah. Um, any of the Beverly Dude. Hills cops? They're, they're, I okay, like them all. Okay, the Beverly yeah. Hills cop. Yeah, that's yeah. my. That's my kind of like. I don't want to call it sneaky because everybody loved Beverly Hills cop. Yeah. But Beverly Hills cop was great. Coming to America is fantastic. The, what about Daddy Daycare? You know, Daddy you, you like had it too. Daycare your Daddy home. Daycare's dope. That's what I yeah. got introduced to Eddie Murphy. Good one with you can watch with your kids. Yeah. Shrek. Shrek. Oh, Shrek. Oh, yeah, yeah, Shrek. That's Donkey. right. Donkey. That's yeah. how I got introduced to Eddie Murphy was Shrek and uh, Daddy Daycare. A little bit different than... Yeah. That's how you were introduced the, to Eddie Murphy? A little bit yes. different than Boomerang. It came out when I was six or seven. That makes sense. Wow. Okay. Then yeah. don't go watch the stand-up. The, I mean, DeMarco, watch DeMarco, DeMarco, a little bit different than some of his other stuff. Oh, my God. Yeah, <laughs> completely different. than different. Boomerang, this a little bit different than some of the, the of comedy Eddie. stuff. I can go back and watch it now. I'm a grown woman. Okay, avoid Pluto Nash. Okay. D- don't ever watch that. And uh, what was the other one I said? Avoid also Hilarious. coming to America. The the last uh, the one it. that they did. I, I didn't see it. I loved it. It's you a, loved it? You're the first person I've heard say I love it. goodbye to all the characters. It was awesome. Yeah. See? Hey. Guess who produced this? Who did? Rick James. Rick James produced this. I think I knew that. Yeah. There was a bet with uh, Richard Pryor between Eddie Murphy and Richard Pryor, 100K, that Eddie Murphy couldn't really sing, and this is the song that proved it. I've so also we won. seen Eddie Murphy's um, like SNL sketches. Did he do like the Mr. Rogers Neighborhood, like the, the inverted Mr. Rogers yes, Neighborhood? Yes, he yeah, did. That mm. one. Yes. Yeah. And I'm Gumby, dang it. <laughs> okay, we got some uh, <laughs> Hall of Fame stuff that's going on. So ESPN Sources, Jerry West has been elected into the Naismith Basketball Hall of Fame as a contributor to the game. His record, third hall enshrinement. Wes has been previously inducted as a player in 1979 as a member of the 1960 U.S. Olympic team 2010. This is the third time that he's inducted. 
Em, you asked an interesting question. Yeah, so my question was, is he the most important figure in the in NBA history? He's a three-time Hall of Famer. He's a three-time Hall of Famer. He's the logo. Got to be honest, I didn't even know that that was... I thought if you were in the Hall of Fame, like, you're in. I didn't think I didn't it was know, possible. I didn't know that you can get... So, player? Yeah, you can get inducted as certain things. So, you can get inducted yeah. as both a player sure, and a coach. coach and right. A, and so, a his executive. Are, he's a player? What was the second one for? You say Olympics? It said as a and member of the 1960 U.S. Olympic team. So, yeah. So, that Olympic team got um, inducted. So Into the Hall of Fame. Everybody on that team got inducted. And then. He got inducted as a player. And then now he's got inducted as a quote-unquote contributor to the game. So, I'm assuming that's his roles as an executive um, and multiple franchises. Well, he's the best. He's the greatest executive. In my opinion, he's the greatest executive executive to ever be a part of the game. The only person that I would, I would. Former player executive, or just executive. I think he's, period. The, I think he's the greatest executive. I mean, he got the Showtime uh, yeah. era. Mm -hmm. You got Kobe and Shaq. You got him trying to get Kobe not to work out with other. Let, I let me hide who, this guy. Who else would be in the running for executive? Pat Riley. Reinsdorf? Yeah. Is that his name? Chicago? Well, um, yeah, players? Jerry Reinsdorf. Okay. Yeah. Right, yeah. Pat Riley was a player previously, so if we're doing player to, to executive, Pat or uh, Jerry would be up there. But just period executives, yeah. I guess. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. You said you said you were excited about um, Vince Carter, Chauncey Billups, also elected into the Naismith Basketball Hall of Fame. By the way, I don't know how much you're into this in this official announcement is coming on Saturday after the Final Four. Sources told the Athletic in the stadium that uh, Vince Carter and Chauncey Billup will be inducted. Are you a big Hall of Fame? Like, even in the NFL, I, I don't know. I don't know anymore what is that guy should be in the Hall of Fame, that guy shouldn't. But Vince Carter getting in, you got excited. I was uh, geeked. And Chauncey Billups. Chauncey Billups, would you call him a superstar during his career? No. But exactly. I, I don't think he has to be a superstar. But you respected him, of course. That, he was a team leader. He's look. He's a he's a champion. So I'm glad he's getting his roses. And Vince Carter, at one point, was the I guess the next best thing to Michael Jordan. Like he carried the league for a while with his acrobatics and whatnot. So yeah, I'm happy Vince Carter is getting his love too. At the same time, yeah, I, I uh, the Vince Carter piece of it. I mean, there's a lot of things, certain players that you just can't kind of control what their career was. Yeah. I think of, I actually had this opportunity a couple of weeks ago. We're doing the pregame show, Michael and I. Lakers are playing the Atlanta Hawks. Dominique Wilkins is part of the broadcast team for the Hawks. Wow. So we got Dominique to join us. And I'm sitting there, I'm like, and, and I, I remember Michael saying something to the effect of, you know, here's Dominique. Could have been potentially drafted by the Los Angeles Lakers. Lakers took James Worthy. So it goes kind of a completely different direction of where it went. But a lot of times the success that you're going to have is just also going to be predicated on what franchise did you end up with? Who were your teammates? Part of it's luck. Yeah. Part of it is, is a little bit luck. Yeah. So I, I think there's a lot of times where you don't really have control over it. No doubt. I wish Trace, I wish that Tracy McGrady and, and Vince Carter never broke up. Mm -hmm. That would have been something special. But just, yeah. yeah, I'm happy he's getting his roses. That's that's crazy. All right, let's go to break here real quick. We come back. We've got Super Cross Talk. Stay right here. Travis and Sleeve Show, DeMarco in the house, 710 ESPN. Halo's back to the big A.
Sportsmanlike with Evan Candy and Michelle. Now, morning, 6 to 10 a.m. on LA's Mega Sports Station, 710 ESPN. KSPN Los Angeles, a Good Karma Brands radio station. I'm guessing this. the score here. This is from Excalibur. Mace, this is your world. Marcus, do you it know? Is, it was used in Excalibur. Oh, see. Fortuna? Lord of the Rings? Gladiator. No, uh, uh, no uh, not Gladiator. No. It is no, literally okay. Gladiator. It is, it is, it is Gladiator. gladiator. <laughs> yeah, baby. Three for three, baby. <laughs> All right, you guys want one more? Yeah, yeah, let's yeah, give us another one. Do it. Do it. That's Harry Potter. Oh, Harry Potter. Yeah, yeah. Harry Potter. Oh, see, I've never seen yeah. a Harry Potter movie. That's I'm with Harry you. Potter, All right, now. one more, one more? Okay, yeah. One more. Pirates of the Caribbean? Nope. Come on, guys. Arnia. Arnia? Nope. It is Hans Zimmer. So that it is Hans Zimmer. Uh, Oppenheimer. Nope. It's, a, it's another Nolan movie. Inception. Maybe, Inception. maybe it's the most beloved Nolan movie. Memento. Not Batman. <laughs> Stop. It is Batman. Batman. It is Batman. It's Dark Knight. Oh, okay. Dark Knight. Oh, wow. Okay. This plays as he's riding Knight? off on that is motorcycle. It's Dark Knight and Dark Knight, 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 Knight Rises. Dark it's Dark Knight. Dark Knight. Just straight up Dark Knight. Dark Knight. And it's Knight. like, he's the Dark Knight. The best wow. one of three. Batman. That I was. number three. Yeah, we did, wasn't We great. did. How many of those did we do? Oh. I think we did 160. So from 11 to noon, that's all we did. I yeah. We are going to do exactly the same, same thing. <laughs> the same one. You guys are going to do the exact same thing. By the way, it's National Movie Score Day. Take is it, it away, I like Mason. It. Yeah. 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 That's what we were doing. You know what else today is? What is? National Walking Day. Yeah. Oh, boy. Huh. Let's go. Wherever Travis Rogers okay, is look. right now, you know right. he's walking. Wait till you hear this. Yeah. All right. So sent him a text earlier. Yep. How many steps do you think this dude took yesterday? So uh, Travis right now in, is in a he's in a uh, he's zone. in a different world he's in a zone he's, in a he's zone. definitely getting ten thousand steps oh, yeah, in a okay. day sure. so he's on vacation 14, right now fourteen thousand steps twenty seven thousand well, steps where, where did he walk did he walk? he's walking all Emily day Emily is concerned yeah that's so a just, lot of steps he's walking the earth what? all Unless day he's at, at Disneyland if he's at Disneyland and makes sense he might be at Disneyland he was a, no he's in Palm I know Springs. he's not yeah I know he's not I Disneyland. know he's in Palm maybe Springs maybe he's yeah. in Disneyland for a day because he went to my favorite burger joint yesterday <laughs> Palm Springs oh so good yeah what's Tyler's it called Tyler's in Palm Springs okay right why, now, why your favorite what is just literally the best hamburger I have ever had wow wow is at Tyler's in Palm Springs have you? Do no, you I've go never. To Palm, I've never. Palm I don't. Springs is like one of my favorite places. Fun. I love Palm Springs. It's awesome. Mud Did bath. you introduce Woo. Marcus Grant? Well, we were just getting there. Oh, okay. <laughs> we were just getting Grant's there. In the NFL <laughs> here. He's filling in for Ireland. I am. And he's he's got nothing to say because you haven't introduced him. It's, Marcus, it's, my apologies. It's oh, kind good. Of, but I did good. say I did it's say Marcus's rude. I did say Marcus's name when we were doing yeah. the the scores and everything it's else. Right. And I did even mention it on the steps. It's a little and little and frankly, rude. because you're co-hosting with him today, yeah. you should have introduced him. Oh. Wow, no, no, touche. Just, this is technically still your show. So <laughs> it is not. I'm just riding along for the for the uh, yeah. for the action, and you failed to introduce Marcus. <laughs> Marcus, see what I got to deal with here. Yeah. He's already putting yeah. this out here. It's already wow. putting this, this out here. This is my here. life for the next two and a half hours. Oh, yesterday was just oh what god. Happened? Yesterday there was so much trouble on the show. What happened? Well, so did Chris hang out the whole time? Yeah, yeah you know, know, I could not it. shake him. Yeah. He what about the LeBron stuff? No, God. That was the last. Went into like an Ireland thing at the last hour. Hour of the show and it was just <laughs> what brutal. did you do did you try to, i defended john okay as i Good. always do yep my friend my partner yep defended him. who you have not worked with in about he's been gone for been gone like for a, a month while. and a half a while month now. wow yeah wow is this longer than the grammy trip it feels like it's been it longer is than the grammy and trip. they never take an east coast road trip this late in no the year. and he worked some during the grammy trip like mm -hmm. he would pop up for a day mm -hmm. or pop up for half a show that kind of this time he's just disappeared why would he do that to you i don't i don't know well i think it's because it's an every other day schedule mm -hmm. so they travel the lakers travel on like they would have tra well they traveled last night but like for example when they are in let's say over the weekend they were in toronto right um, there's a day off between games where they travel. They never traveled the night of unless it's a back-to-back. -back. So he didn't have a chance to do the show. Quick question on the burger. By the way, that made no sense. But it didn't. To be honest with you, <laughs> yeah, as, it good to me. I, I, no, I but as to... he was going, he like started throwing Saturday in Toronto. Saturday like, in Mace, Toronto. I don't know what's happening here. It was, actually, it was another <laughs> night in you. Toronto, and yeah. Why are you so against cutting a burger in half? 
Why am I so against cutting yeah, a burger is, in half? Are, do you cut your burger you're in not, half? You absolutely do not. You're not you do supposed not. to cut a burger in half. No, Marcus, you lose. Marcus, do you cut a burger in half? Now that I think about it, I don't. But See? I don't know that I'm morally opposed to you, it. But, but some restaurants lose. come out and they will have already we cut the burger in half. We started the, the, the juice. juiciness of Thank it. The juice yeah. of it. We started with if you eat pizza with a knife and fork. No. I'm like, that is a deal burger. No, I'm done. Check, please. No. That's the second dumb. thing is yeah. if you cut your burger in half. I mean, um, I guess when I, when yeah. I was a child, sure. Exactly. Okay. Right. Thank you. Right, Marcus, yeah, right. that's right. what I'm saying. Thank you very much. Right. By the way, you look like Robert Sala. Aha! <laughs> See? I'm not the only one. <laughs> I, might get, I might get fired by the, end of, uh, <laughs> by the end of this football season. That could happen as well. Um, Marcus, you seem like a very reasonable person i'd like to think somebody I am. that is a great contributor to um the rest of society yeah uh-huh demarco this came up a while back I was like, where is this going not i'll again. tell you where it's going <laughs> not again well it's only coming because jorge told me to ask the question okay. we gotta ask the question Did I think you? it's, it's oh, a very jorge. it's a very well jorge's on your side okay. on this. Okay. go ahead this is All true right. but go ahead ask away marcus you're at the grocery store okay mm-hmm. you did you got what you needed yep you put everything on that conveyor belt and mm-hmm. now it's kind of all going once you get all your stuff up, do you grab the divider? Absolutely. And you put it for the person behind for you. For the person behind. It is a courtesy. Of course yeah. it is. And it's absolutely of a course courtesy. It's a By the courtesy. way, I do that also. Of That's course you do. like the natural That's of course thing what you do. do. DeMarco, you and Demar- you. DeMarco, not helping you no. out. No. What is socially Not acceptable. helping you out. I do DeMarco. not expect someone to do it for me, and I will not do it for you. Okay, so then the next step of that is, do you return your shopping cart to the designated area? Absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. DeMarco and leaves it like in front of you. No, he's no he doesn't. I, I know no. the type of person I do. you are. I will you're, collect you leave people. Your, you leave your shopping cart no. right in front of the doors opening. You're like, you know what, screw it, I'm out of here. I'm carts and bring them back. I can't stand that. But I just will not do the dividers. It just does not occur to me. Seems like a very simple one. seems simple. That's less effort than putting the shopping carts back. I mean, I give you, and like, if you're in front of me, I give you plenty of space. I don't even start to put my stuff on the belt until you're done. So I expect to say, I guess it's like a COVID thing. So Is he like, the yeah. only one that doesn't put the divider? No, apparently Jorge. Jorge doesn't either. Jorge doesn't either. Jorge. Unbelievable. I'm shocked. Did, you thought you knew him. The cashier yeah. does it for me. She sees Thank my Thank you. Stuff she, cashier does it for me. Like, yeah. Who's rude? Done that? What cashier has that ever? Is the cashier putting yeah. the groceries He's in the car, too? You can't read them. I have never had a problem. I have that's never that's had an issue. issue. Never. There's yeah, never been a problem. They probably don't talk to you. <laughs> There's probably no, no eye contact no, made. They probably talk about you after you leave. I, yeah. yeah, and I'm cool with the people that I that, that check me out. We're all cool. They don't care. You think you're? cool. I even asked them. They said they don't care. After I mean, that show, I I'm asked sure them. on the list of things that the <laughs> checkout person has to worry about, the divider is probably low on the list. But it's not. It's not list, even yeah. the checkout person that's the issue here. It's the person behind you. The other citizen that's standing there <laughs> that now has to reach over you to get to the dividers, just put the divider yeah, there for them. I am way right over by you. the pay part. <laughs> it, it's done. Once I put it up, I'm done. I've never had an issue. This has never been a problem. I'm right, final one I have, and yeah. I swear to Marco, okay. this is it. All right. What? Last one. In the morning, you go for a walk. <laughs> it's I'm not just, a walk. I, I just, the dump was last segment. segment. No, but I just want to <laughs> right, know. Right, but I didn't hear it. So okay. I, I want to know if they do the same thing. Okay. Yeah. When you guys go out on a walk or you're you're doing something, you're listening to music, yeah, podcasts, whatever it is. Yeah, I got my earbuds in. I'm gone. Okay, <laughs> <laughs> that's uh, all I'm saying. He doesn't, so he turns it all the way up on his phone. What? Yes, <laughs> you don't have earbuds. I do. I just don't use them. Why would you not use the? Because you hear I'm, the music much better than if it's on your because phone. Because I am your... not listening to a podcast. I am listening to music. Yeah, I am too. Right. So I am blasting music. Blasting music at 5 a.m. when he's walking in the morning. In neighborhoods. On your phone. Well, wait, wait. I'm blasting music at 5 a.m. There's no one out there. So what am I doing? You're wasting sound. It's well, just going yeah, out you're in not, the ether. You're not getting, getting good your ears sound. And no, if I if I get the headphones, what am I doing? All I'm doing is is listening is to killing my better. hearing. And there's no well, one out and there. And you're respecting the people that are yeah. also around so, that you're yeah. not it's, no it's no no dark. no no not yeah as in for you as in yeah against you <laughs> no 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 it's dark you can't see me so at least you can hear me i just don't <laughs> why why do you not want to hear the music better by having the Earbuds. I, I don't need to have like you know a, a car stereo as I'm like walking. I just sound need, quality. No, I just I, need a beat. I if, just need a beat. If I'm just, having a conversation with you, like it's better if I'm sitting next to you as opposed to being down the hall screaming it at you, right? But it's just it's in my little pouch. It, it's playing, and I you walk. A little pouch. Yeah, you know the what do you call that? The the little hoodie, the little pouch. Oh, the yeah, 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 ye
Yeah. yeah. Those I are can hear the music important. and yeah. I can hear whatever, whatever else is going on. I wonder, though, what the long-term effect is of having Air Buds in. I mean, probably not great. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I wonder... You and John. It's a lot of... No, but here's the... the we both keep our headphones really loud. Yeah. Mine are incredibly loud. But I only ever have one have one ear. So this ear, I will always have hearing. My right ear, yeah. my left ear, I've completely blown out. Blown out. Yeah. yeah. And it okay. keeps, Is John so on turn both? It up louder and louder and louder. Yeah, Ireland's on both. Hmm. Yeah, Ireland's on both. See, I told, I got the warning on my phone. Like you've been listening to this music too loud for too long. Oh, see, I'm pretty good about hearing. volume yeah. control because for that very reason, like I'm, I'm sure I have tinnitus or something. Yeah, you don't have to yeah. blow your brains out. Well, I mean, the stuff we're listening to, we're talking, it was Rage, it was Against, Rage Against the Machine, that's how we started. So, oh, Rage? Yeah, it was yeah, Rage. see, that's loud. I can't play <laughs> so that you're quietly. you're walking through the neighborhood. At 5 a.m. Yeah, at 5 a.m. With, with killing rage. in the name of. Your whole, your whole neighborhood's <laughs> out to Bulls on Parade, right? <laughs> yes! <laughs> <laughs> but you can hear me in the park. <laughs> you know I'm in there. He's there's, some, there's DeMarco again. He's not, sne- he's right. not sneaking up on Absolutely. you. Absolutely, yes. You impressed 4-1 and one on this road trip? Or is I, the competition? Well, I look the schedule. Uh, it's it, they've been blessed by the schedule gods on this which particular by, road trip, which, which, which is the, fine. Which everybody gets. That. I was going to say everybody is going to play those teams anyways. Yeah. They just happen to have the easier part of their schedule a little bit later on. Now they close hard. They close with a very tough run here. Mm-hmm. Uh, they got Minnesota, Cleveland, they got Golden, Golden State, won five in a row. Mm-hmm. I mean, all of a sudden they've got games down the stretch that are really tough. I just think they're probably locked into the nine. I think they're locked into. Okay, the if if Marcus, if the because everybody's in front of them. I know there's winning. If the playoffs started today, this is their path. Mm-hmm. They got to play Golden State in the play-in in a one-game play-in here at Crypto. At crypto right. Yep. If you win that one, it's a one-game playoff on the road against either Phoenix or Sacramento. So basically, it's Steph Curry, Kevin Durant, Devin Booker, um, Demontis Sabonis, De'Aaron Fox. Two of those of that mix. Mm-hmm. And if they get through both of those, Denver won yesterday. OKC lost. I forget. So they, they, they lost to Denver in the first round? They get Denver in the first oh my round. God. Mm. <laughs> By the way, I don't even think they – if they face Sacramento, I think it's over. If they face Sacramento in the second play-in game – Which would be on the road. absolutely got their number. Mm-hmm. Uh, DeMontis Sabonis is like 11-0 and against AD now. It just just owns him. Uh, Darren yeah. Fox always lights him up. I he, just think that's a really tough game for the late – I think they're 0-4 against Sacramento 0-4 this, year, this year. Yeah, and they've lost a few games in a row. The only thing I'll just say to that is – Malik Monk's out four to six yeah, weeks. Right. Kevin Herter is out for the rest of the year. So what do you think of that well, path? Well, the way the Lakers season has gone is though they, they could win any of those games. They could lose any of those games. And then you, you talk about this stretch right now and, and the fact that they've gone so well on this road trip. Um, I think it's something to be applauded simply because you never knew on a night-to-night basis what you were getting with this team. Right, right. right. I mean – the fact that they had that great comeback against the Clippers. And who they play? They played the, was it Memphis or somebody else like a couple nights later. Milwaukee no, was the other big the other comeback. Big, but they had the big comeback against the Clippers. And then two nights later against a really bad team started really bad. And it just felt like, yeah, this is about right for the way this team has gone. So the fact that they've played well over this road trip is great. But it still means, look, the Warriors could come in here and win. The Warriors could come in here and any lose, of those by, teams. lose by yeah, double any digits. Of those teams you know, can. anything could happen with this Laker team. That's crazy. Ten games over five hundred and ninth. Right, they're playing well. <laughs> That's the thing. They're was, playing yeah. well, and they're just like not what? making up any ground. That puts like fifth or sixth in the East right now. Okay, last year. If they do it, if they do it, yeah, you no, they can't fire the coach. <laughs> <laughs> he said something I've never heard. Okay. Can I say it? Let me see. Yeah, yeah. Darvin Ham extension. Look at that face. <laughs> <laughs> that, that sounds like a punchline to a joke. <laughs> Darvin Ham extension. I have never heard those three words together. Yeah. To your credit. By you the did... way, Lakers Twitter loves you right now. Really? <laughs> <laughs> loves you right now. <laughs> to your credit, you did warn me. Like yeah. you did say, okay, we got three words. I just want you to be ready. Well, I'm, like, I'm take... like, what three words what are you going to say? What would it take for Darvin Ham to get an extension at this point? I just, Western you, Conference like, Finals? The, what you just laid out, if you go and beat Golden State, you beat Phoenix, you beat Sacramento, you beat Denver in the oh, first well, round. Oh, you beat Denver in the first round. That's yeah. what I mean. You okay. do all this That's stuff. That's not happening. Right? I, don't, I mean, I think <laughs> the <laughs> only <laughs> team that can beat Denver is Boston. That's the only team that can beat Denver. Yeah, Marcus, what you said, too, you get to the Western Conference in, Finals again. Finals. That will be two years as a head coach of the Lakers making it to the Western Conference Finals twice. 
I don't know if then extension, but... Then you might use the E-word. Yeah, I might use the E-word. <laughs> the E-word. The E-word. Careful E-word. on that E-word. E-word. can't even say it. <laughs> yeah. All right, Super Cross Talk is brought to you by In-N-Out Burger. That's what a hamburger is all about. Mason in Ireland. Marcus in the house. DeMarco, good stuff. Good stuff, man. Travis back tomorrow, 710 yes, ESPN. 